Hello and welcome to the Bellhops Tabletop. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge. I know you probably joined us tonight to watch us play some Gloomhaven, but unfortunately that's not going to happen today. Uh, not only did we have two people cancel due to wedding plans, or wedding planning, not an actual wedding yet, uh, my wife Deanna and I were going to play a two-player game and stream that, but it, she ended up coming down sick yesterday as well, so... Now I've got my friend Sean and my podcast co-host as well here with us, and we talked about doing a couple different things. So one of the things I thought about doing is playing single player. Seeing as Gloomhaven is supposed to be best single player, I figured, hey, why don't we show that off? Well, I had no clue that to play single player, you have to play two characters, which means if I wanted to go downstairs and play a single character right now, I either have to open up the two characters we haven't played, or I have to play one of the other three players' characters. And none of them are going to want me earning XP and gold and everything for them. So that, unfortunately, we had to toss out as an option. So playing single player, maybe if I plan ahead next time I know this is going to happen, I can open up the new character boxes and maybe do a random dungeon or something. But you guys watching me open up the, the two other player character classes and trying to figure them out, I don't think was going to be very worthwhile. So then Sean came up with the suggestion of going through the rather exhaustive FAQ and errata on BoardGameGeek. Since that came up last week after our game, well, during our game last week, Sean found a rather uh, unfortunate problem with some of the cards in the game. Absolutely. The, uh, the FAQ, it turns out, is... Um Expansive would be a <laughs> understatement. Yes. Uh, pages and pages, even without spoilers, um, the the length of errata for a game that is one hundred and fifty dollars is a little daunting and frustrating. I think would be a uh, good way to say that. Yeah, even more so a game that's on its second printing. So most of this should have gotten caught already when they do the reprint. It would have been really nice to see if uh, some of these major ones were definitely caught. So that's what we're going to do tonight. Sean and I are going to go through the FAQ. I haven't exactly decided on the format we're going to go through this. I don't think we're going to read the whole thing out loud, but we'll see. Uh, we both got it open here. We're going to talk about it. So instead of getting to see us play Gloomhaven you'll get to hear us talking about Gloomhaven. I personally think that it's going to be interesting for uh, for people watching, especially once this goes out as a video on YouTube, just to, to find out some of the rule issues that happen in the game, rules that they've corrected, and uh, stuff that I knew or didn't know, and what we think of them. So I think it's, it's going to be a worthwhile video to have out there, plus this way at least we're streaming something today. So, as usual, next week you should be able to join us 8.30 p.m. Eastern right here at twitch.tv forward slash tabletop bellhop, and we should get back to our campaign, hopefully. Uh, if not, we'll figure out something. We'll, we'll stream some form of Gloomhaven or another. So, just to let people know, this uh, errata is not written by the uh, designer Isaac. It's actually by someone by the name of Alex Florin on the BGG forums who's also the author of the rules summary document mm -hmm. in the files section of uh, the Gloomhaven forums. Now uh, it is, from what I understand, endorsed by Isaac. That's in, the, the, the information I was told about this particular FAQ. Indeed. Isaac, as we've mentioned in, before in the podcast, does stop by and uh, participate in the forums on Board Game Geek. So uh, I'm willing to bet he has looked through this at the very least, if not written it himself. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure sections he has. So the yes. other thing that'll be worth noting is I played Gloomhaven many times, especially if you've watched this, you've probably seen me play Gloomhaven. Sean has not played at all, so yep. it'll be an interesting perspective on it. So I'm sure there'll be some rules I'll have to explain or go through. So what I'm not sure is how we should do this. Um, just start at the top, read them off. What do you want to do to the to get through this beast? Well, he seems to have laid it out in a pretty uh, decent manner. Um, so, I mean, if there's stuff that you're coming across that's like, well, this is pretty obvious. This is nothing weird. I, sh like, I think FAQ stuff isn't as big a deal as right. the errata stuff, where is the errata stuff is the stuff we really want to get into. Um, or stuff that has confused you on the stream, because I know you guys yes, have run into extreme happened. play along the way. Um, so if you've been caught up by some of this stuff, that's uh, maybe a sign that we should uh, take a look at it. 
One of the problems is once we get into errata, we are going to get into spoiler territory. So as of right now, we don't plan on spoiling anything without letting you know. Uh, there's no spoiler tag on the video at this point, but we probably will get to the point where we are going to spoil some things. When that happens, we'll give you a big heads up. We'll let you know. Uh, watching on YouTube, the screen will probably be flashing with the big spoiler words on top of it. Um, we'll try to keep that to, like, say, the second half of this. I don't know how long we're going to record, but just as a rough check, we're going to try to cover the non-spoiler stuff first. And I'm really worried once we get into errata that we may be jumping into spoiler territory because most of the errata is probably going to be on cards that people may not have unlocked yet. Right. They uh, they have been good. So as we go down the uh, the thing, they have actually used the spoiler tag. So they have hidden mm -hmm. all the spoilers uh, from us even until we click on them. So uh, we do know we do know right away what is considered a spoiler by the author of this this uh, document at least. Okay, the other thing I'm doing right now is dropping a link to the actual FAQ in the chat. For any of you with us here on Twitch, you can follow along with where we're at. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, that'll be in the description down below. I'm not going to flash that up on screen because it's not no, the it's... Most, nice, uh, <laughs> most nice link. Maybe we can uh, create a bit.ly link to it or something. We could throw that in because, no, it's not a happy link. Oh, I wish we had this as a Google Doc, because then we could see what each other are oh, seeing or highlighting. I could copy-paste so, the whole thing into a Google Doc. But I'm thinking this first thing, the first thing they are about skipping, um, choosing not to perform specific parts of an action, and what's considered a negative effect. Reading through that, there was some stuff in there that I know we played wrong. So I think that's okay. worth talking about. So let's we'll start with that then. So the question is, can I choose to not to perform specific parts of an action, and what is considered a negative effect? Uh, and the answer is, you may not skip the following abilities or effects. That's negative effects. Effects that when performed will, not may, reduce hit points, lose cards, or apply a negative condition to yourself or an ally. So that's not skippable. If there's a negative effect... It happens. Yeah, that part uh, was pretty self-explanatory. Because yeah. the rule is you cannot skip an effect that causes, or a, a, a part of your card or an action that causes a negative effect. That's what it says in the right. rule book. It just doesn't really tell you what's negative or not. Right. Well, also included are standalone infusions. See, that was are, an important one. Which are not attached to a specific ability. So infusions gained from modifier cards are considered attached to the attack so they can be skipped. Uh, for characters with at least one ability on the action must be performed in order to gain the standalone infusion. This is not true for monsters. They cannot skip abilities and do perform their infusion even if they can't perform another ability during their action. Yeah, so this is when the infusion symbols on a card, if you have a card that it just does an infusion... You can't skip that because right. it's considered, I, I don't see how it's considered a negative effect, but I guess it's considered a potentially negative effect because maybe the monsters will use it. Right. What's more interesting to me is that you can skip infusions if they're tied to an ability. So right. you can make your attack, and if it says infuse green, you can choose not to. Say you're fighting earth elementals, and you don't want them to be able to use it, or more importantly, you don't want to infuse fire when fighting sun demons. Right. And and there are a lot of elemental demons in this, or uh, yes. elementals in general in this game. Uh, every every week, there's ice or fire or something happening uh, to you guys. Very true. Uh, uh, so the next thing is XP granting abilities. Um, you so you can't skip them. Yeah, uh, um, that, you know what? That's, that's important. It it sounds like it shouldn't be, but you know what? There's the private gold cards. And there are the private gold card I took the last time we played, which would have given me two check marks, was something like loser or something like that. And it was finish the game only gaining seven XP. So there is a very strong reason to sit there and go, no, I don't want to take the XP for this. Right. Okay, well, that makes sense. And then plus and minus X ability adjustments from modifier cards cannot be skipped. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly. I'm, I'm just assuming that's plus to attack, minus to attack. Yeah, that seems to be, yeah, plus, yeah. So just, you can't, if, if there is an ability uh, adjustment from any modifier card, it has to be applied. You can't yeah. say, you can't Which again, it. I would think that pluses are positive and wouldn't be considered a negative effect, but. Well, yeah, I think there, I think this is, yeah, it's weird how they're, uh, 
I guess this is some of it's negative, some of it's not, but no matter what, you can't skip them. Right. Um, so individual targets of an area of effect attack. If you do the attack, everyone gets hit. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you're in the area, you get hit. Let's say so you can't uh, you can't cheat and save your friends or or that one monster that, that that will get helped by the attack. You can't leave him out. Although in a way, because area effect attacks only attack enemies. Friends are actually safe. Somehow we can oh, control okay. our fireballs. That's well, that's one of the base rules of the game. Is is area effects only target enemies? But well, you do have to hit all the enemies. Right. So if there's that one creature you need to keep alive, or if there's someone your mind thief is planning on controlling next turn, you can't skip one of the monsters. You have to hit everyone. Right. That's now, one I don't think we've messed up. Right. Now one thing they do note is that add target and target X are not area of effect abilities and can be skipped. Yep. Uh, for target X, you may attack less than X targets. So Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, so if you have a target three, you don't need three enemies. You could just attack two. Right. Target three is not area of effect. That's a specific mm -hmm. number of targets to aim at. That makes sense. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's a sort of a slight wording difference, but it's, that's a good one to include there. Uh, and then charges and the effects of multi-use item or ability, if the triggering conditions have been met, cannot be skipped. So I guess you, if you so if you want to avoid those, just don't meet all your triggering conditions. Yeah, see that one's interesting. That's one of the ones I noticed I was playing wrong that actually gets covered in. I don't know if it's in the FAQ or the Errata. I play the Craig Hart, and the Craig Hart has a card called am Extra Ammunition or something like that. I forget the exact name, and what it does is. Anytime you make a ranged attack, you can use it to add another target. And when you do that, you get one XP. Well, what I didn't know is that every time you use a ranged attack, you have to use your extra ammo. And if there is no other target to use, you still expend a use of that extra ammo and get uh, the XP, which makes that card way worse than I thought it was. Yeah, that, and that's definitely a negative. Even though it's, it's a beneficial attack, it's yes. definitely a negative overall that you're, uh, that you're using that. So that was one, like I said, it comes down later on the Craig Hart section, because I did jump ahead to read the stuff from my character class the other day. Right. Uh, and so, at the end of this section, you may skip any other ability or effect, including some or all effects attached to an attack, but you must choose to do so before drawing an attack modifier card. Yeah, that's an interesting rule. Um, I admit, in our group, we're pretty bad for remembering to use potions and stuff before drawing. We play that a little loose. Uh, if we were playing raw, we're technically playing wrong. You have to make those decisions before you draw the card. But it just it's the habit. It's like grab. It's like D and D. You grab the D twenty right. and you roll it, and then go. Oh wait, sorry, I wanted to use this. Right. Uh, yeah. We've been pretty loose with that. I'll admit. Um, I don't know. We we don't tend to. It's no competition. We're not winning any medals. But I do get it, and it makes the interesting part is you can't decide. You you have to decide before you draw if you want to push a guy or not, for example. Right. The interesting part about that is if you're going to use one of the infused elements, you have to make that decision before you flip the card. So you can't be like, I want to see if I kill the guy before I use up the green element to push him. You'd have to draw or decide that before you draw, which is, that changes the strategy up a little bit. Right. Okay. And so, I'm, yep. I'm thinking um, the next ones are very clear in the rule book. So right. can you change the order of abilities? No. Um, every attack you have to draw separate. You do them in any order you choose. If it says do X to get Y, you have to do X. I think that's all pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, right. One of the rules that we did mess up is that effects happen even if your attacks do no damage. I don't even know if that's in here. But it always happens, so if you're going to infuse green or if it's going to push it, even if the opponent soaks all the damage, that still happens. Um, when things say on your next attack action is right after declaring the target before drawing your modifier card again, which is interesting. Um, I think most of it's all pretty simple. This one's really interesting about how to know if an effect's attached to a prior ability. Yeah, that's I, this I found really useful, but I don't know how we can talk about this on the show without showing pictures. Which yeah, actually I can kind of do. I could put it over your head. That's true. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting one because they've actually used fonts yes. to determine what is and isn't uh, a separate ability. Uh, and that and is then they not talk about explained in the rule book anywhere. Right. And and they're talking about you know card size constraints and sometimes they do things differently with smaller fonts and more spacing uh, and I and I'm sorry but typography yeah. without explicit 
definition is a really horrible way to determine. Oh, something. I agree. Though the, uh, def- just, the expl- explanation is here, which is good well, to know. <laughs> it's here, but it's not. But it's not else. in the rule book. In, in the game. Yes. <laughs> um, so the fact that they would they would print a game and you know all, make these arbitrary. Well, yeah. a bigger font means Seer. something else. This is going to cover Sean's face here on the video, but I'll see if you can see it. I don't know how if that's big enough to really see on the video, but if you could read off the rules. No, I can't make this any bigger, can I? Someone should have uploaded a bigger picture. Yeah. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. So basically what it's saying is that items in bold are the main thing, the what the action is. So you can kind of see that on this one. And then anything in small font under that is tied to it. So it's if that happens, the bottom thing happens. But if that there's like a second card, that second card is the is the is the killer because I think in the yeah. trample card, attack, move and attack are separate, and that's that's just obvious. I mean that to me that that says very obvious. But when you look at that second card, the um, sorry, I'm gonna write trample. I'm not seeing trample. The first the one at the, the first, bottom. No, the first blue card. Oh, trample. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. bottom ability. So you mean the bottom ability instead of the top ability? Yeah, yeah. So the the move move and attack are are separate abilities. So yeah, I'm gonna put this over here. So again, this is this is uh, oh, it maximized. All right, that's about as big as you can get. So yeah, the attack at the top is pretty simple, but yeah, the bottom because move is in bold and attack is in bold, they're actually two separate things. You're gonna move with a jump, and then your attack is a totally separate action that's gonna do something different. Right now, what what annoys me is the next card, the overwhelming assault, um, because up top, obviously, attack that's easy. Yeah, and get XP when you attack. Bottom. When you move down to the bottom, you've got a move and a push, and they haven't followed the same format that they did in the last card. Correct. So now, now move and push are separate atta- abilities, yep. but you can't tell because they've used different fonts, and they could be connected, they could not be connected, and yeah. it's just not clear. And, and, and why me, is push all in caps and move is not like? Yeah, they, they've made a they've made a really questionable choice there when it comes to. See, and then, uh, then the next one messes with all those rules, right? Yeah, it's got, so, yeah, so no, the it's top's pretty different. self-explanatory. You're going to heal four, and it has a range of two, because one's bold and the other's not. And then you're going to infuse green. And the interesting part is it's not a standalone infusion, so you have to infuse green, going right. back to what we were talking about earlier. But then the bottom one doesn't use the bold rules, but because there's a line break, those are considered two separate actions. Right. So your move is one thing, and damaging everyone around you is separate. And yet Which, it does not appear that way based on the other rules that they've already right. explained on so trample and rumbling ordinance or rumbling advance yeah. follow two completely separate typographic rules to distinguish. Yeah. And and it's, that's a real problem. I'm yeah, sorry. It's, it, it's 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 an issue. And one we didn't realize. Now to be honest, like looking at Rumbling Advance, I have that card. I play that character class. What that tells me is I don't have to move to do damage to the guys next to me, but I could figure that out. I could choose right. to move zero. Like, so we never like played it wrong. But then like you keep going down in the bottom row. Sorry, Pinterest thing showing up on top. Like that backstab, that one's got a ton of text, but none of the line breaks are there. So that's actually all one move. Right. It's an attack three that does all this other stuff. Right. And, and see same that, thing with the next one. And, and the, the backstab follow actually does follow the, the initial rules that they established. Um, so that's okay. It's it's really, I mean, it's the rumbling advance um, that that really messes yeah. things up. Um, oh, well, and also uh, the mind's weakness, augment and attack um, are are strange too, it, because they've used a completely different uh, set by using that blue band. Yeah, that blue band. I don't I don't play that character class, so that's something even different. That's yeah. It's an odd choice. It's an augment. <laughs> that's why, yeah, because augments work different. And a different card explains how augments work. Right. Uh, augments basically stay up and play and keep affecting you until you replace them with another augment. But that's right. not really explained there. It's but, yeah. still, but it's just odd that they've used yet another way of describing things for no apparent reason. I mean, maybe yeah, I if you know. play that character, it makes sense. But there's no real good reason why that is a third or fourth mm-hmm. different way of separating things. So, but yeah, overall I do recommend people go to this FAQ and read that section. Cause yeah. it, it's weird. 
And it, it yeah. even says, like, right in the description, it says, due to card size, sometimes a step root ability will have a smaller font. However, these will have more spacing. Like, really? Yeah. Seriously? <laughs> that and put this in the rule book. Like, I, I realize yeah. there's conflicting, confusing rules, but it's a 54-page book as it is. Toss yeah. this paragraph in there. Like, we had no idea. I had no clue that the, the different font choices and that meant anything more than aesthetics. Yeah, it's interesting. There's a lot of people on Reddit who are uh, sort of like, "Oh, you know, some of these let's play videos, you really got to be careful. They're playing their they're, they're playing uh, you know, rules, wrong rules and things." And and I think that's important because they're people are playing the wrong rules because this game has got some problems with its yes. rules. Um and I'm sorry, this is not a game where, you know, Everyone is going to immediately run out board mm -hmm. game geek immediately just because they bought a hundred and fifty dollar game and expect to spend three hours reading <laughs> <laughs> the errata yeah. for the game they just spent one hundred and fifty dollars on. You know they want to get it on the table, mm -hmm. and you know, and a lot of times, a lot of times nowadays, that means getting it on the table on camera. And so, yeah. if they're playing it wrong, that's the fault of the game in many cases. Now, sometimes people just get yeah. rules wrong from the rule book. It happens, um, and that's. You know, part of that is part of that in, in a let's play is understanding that look, some of these rules are difficult. See, we made mistakes, and you know, announcing and, and figuring out that you've made mistakes and letting people know. But when you can't know that you've made mistakes because you didn't read paragraph seven hundred and fourteen, mm -hmm. sub sub paragraph three. You know. Yeah. Well, I'll admit it. We we talked about it with my group after noticing a couple of the things in this that we were playing wrong. Some significantly changed stuff we'd done in the game, and I don't know if we can backtrack at this point. One decision I, I considered was just throw out the errata. We're going to play it as written in the box I own. And that is a valid way to play the game. That's how yep. the game was published. We're going to play it as published. The only reason I'm really looking at this is because we actually got to a point last game where we couldn't play yeah. it as published. It, it actually, And that's worked. what worries me. Like, it was literally broken. We could not follow the rules as written. Yes, we could come up with a compromise. Yes, we could work through it. But I want to know what else is broken, which is why I kind of want to look through this. And then we'll make a more informed decision on which of this errata we're going to use, which we're not. Yeah. Uh, I admit I prefer to play things by the proper rules. Like, in the end, I'd rather apply all of this errata. It, but Absolutely. if I have to try to remember that six of my cards in my deck are different from the rest because the rules are wrong on them, or I have now have to sleeve all my cards to keep track of the additions, I'm probably not going to go that far. It's just more work than I want to do. Yeah, I mean, ideally, I mean, this is Isaac's game, and Isaac has approved this, and, and you know, he knows what mistakes are there and, mm -hmm. and what mistakes have been made, and and he has, has uh, you know, put his blessing on this. So this is the right way to play. But he also put out a game and sold it to people for $150. Uh, yeah. So if you can't play it after, you know, spending $150 and reading the rules. Yeah, well. <laughs> it's a bit of a problem. Of course, I got to say, it sounds like we're hating on Gloomhaven, but this happens with so many games. It does. This, this think, is not a Gloomhaven exclusive issue. No, no. I think a lot of people are concerned about, or at least I'm concerned about this one, because of the, the, the cost, cost and the fact that we're on third printing of this game now. Yeah. Uh, and there's still a number of problems. Yeah, I do hope they fix some of this stuff in the next, next printing, whenever that mm -hmm. comes. As far as I can tell, the game's selling well enough that there should be another printing. Absolutely, especially uh, I'm sure they've sold a lot recently because it had been on sale a few times of, of yeah. late for uh, under a hundred dollars. Yeah, under yeah. hundred US. Um, so the next, uh, I think, ability X plus X no, is that's... pretty uh, obvious. Um, how are we about air active area card recovery? Um, let me look through it quick. Uh, if I play a, this, uh, no, nah, that's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Uh, your cards, you only have to do the actions. You can always use every card as a basic to move or a basic to attack. If you do that, ignore everything else on the card. That's the easiest way to summarize that. Now, an important one for our mind thief, or sorry, our spell weaver, something I had to send Cat, is if I recover cards during my second action, can I recover the card I just played with my first action? This is one we've been playing on the Extreme Edition. My understanding was the cards you played were in like a magic just played area and were well, neither... And that's standard for almost all card games. Yeah, you look at any deck exactly. Builder. There's a played region that's separate from your discard pile. Right, correct. That's normal. That's normal. Any card game mm -hmm. you play. I mean, yeah. I've had to teach my kids that about because it's one of the big things with the deck builders that I'm mm -hmm. playing with the kids. You've got that play area, which is separate from your discard and really right. affects you in a deck builder. Yeah. So in this... I thought there was the same thing. Now, in Gloomhaven, right. there's two discard piles. Well, there's one called your discard pile, and then there's your lost pile. Your right. discard pile, you can, I'll say reshuffle. There's no shuffling, but you can get back. Your lost cards are technically gone from the game. 
except the Spellweaver has an ability to recover her lost cards. Right. She only has a hand of six cards, so she eats through them quickly but can get them back. Well, what I didn't know is that as soon as a card is used, so it's in that magic play area for a bit, but as soon as you actually resolve the card, it immediately goes into the appropriate pile, whether that's discard or lost. And then when you resolve your second card, she always resolves two cards, that first card's already in one of those piles. So that's an important one for any spell weavers out there or any other class that lets you get back lost cards. You can Absolutely. recover the first card played with the second. Because so that, that's a yeah, that's a real variance from normal rules. So it's good to have that called out. Explicitly. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, it's a shame it's not in the rule book. Now, active area, uh, if you have cards with an active area, this one's pretty, uh, we got this right in the rule book. It's in there. They're again in their own spot and you can pull them out at any time. Now, cards in your active area, this is more like a, a tableau builder or your superhero power in DC. Like it's there and it's always active and you can right. get rid of it at any time. So that's something different than the magic played area. This is a, I have an ongoing effect. Basically, if you think of it in RPG terms, you can cancel your ongoing effects at any time. Right. So if you have an ability to recover your lost cards, you can cancel all your active cards and make sure to get those cards back. Right. Uh, no, the rest of this is good. Ability card reveal. I don't even know what this one is. Oh, who cares about this? Like, I, I, <laughs> To me, that's just being a little too... So all it is is you're supposed to only show your top card whenever you reveal your initiative. We right. don't... We just flip them both up and say whichever cards are initiative. Because the card you put on top is the initiative you go at, but then you can use either card in either order. That's, right. That one's kind of silly. Uh, advantage and disadvantage. This one's worth talking about because, holy cow, like, like determining what is a better or worse cards. And the <laughs> end result, even in the FAQ, is that some results are ambiguous. And when you scroll down, there's actually another section of this FAQ called ambiguous. And what ambiguous means is the players get to decide. Right. So, if I have advantage or disadvantage, how do I determine whether one attack modifier card is better or worse in the case of effects on the card beyond the typical plus minus mm -hmm. modifiers? How do I know when a comparison of cards is mathematically <laughs> ambiguous? Yes. Yeah, so I'm sorry. Way, that's yeah. just, just yeah. the fact that that has to be even in here is... <laughs> this, this one, like, it makes sense when you see it. So the way advantage works in Gloomhaven is you draw two cards and keep the better card. The way disadvantage works is you draw two cards and keep the worst card. Right. But then there's a really dumb thing where if you have a modifier card... You draw them different. Now, thankfully, they didn't bring that up in this, but advantage and disadvantage gets complicated with a modifier card. So if you have a modifier card that's like infused green and then you get to draw again, well, that counts as a positive card, so you only get to draw two. But if you have disadvantage, you actually have to keep drawing until you have a minus, whatever. That part's actually very clear in the rule book. But what happens here is what if I have a times two attack and the other one I draw is, say, an attack two? Well, a times two attack, if your attack's only one, is just as good as the attack two. Right. But what if it's a plus two, but your attack zero? So which card's better? Is the times two better? Is the plus two better? Or what's better, plus one with stun or plus two? Like, right. it's a mess. <laughs> and some of it, I mean, some of it actually does make, make mathematical sense. So your two times attack two versus two plus attack two is ambiguous. Because two times two equals two plus two, yes. So that's that's easy enough. And again, if if you've got a two times two versus a two plus one, two times two is better than two plus one. Four, right. you know, four is greater than three. That's nice and easy. Uh, again, then uh, if you've got a two times two uh, with a plus one from consumption. So what that's versus... talking about is if you have an element, you can inf is infused and you can consume it. To get you up to another plus one, right? So it becomes a two plus a two times two. Yes. Versus the uh, two plus one, again four is, is greater than three. You're all good. Yeah. So but the the basic thing there is do the math and yeah. figure like the end result. What would do more damage in in the end? And that seems to little, give you most of it. Right. But then it gets like, to me at least without having played the game, uh, a plus zero stun versus a plus two. Is ambiguous. Well, stun means the monster is not going to go next turn. Right. Uh, but if plus two kills them, that's where ambiguous actually means the players get to decide. Right. So 
I get it, but I don't know. I, I I'm thinking a times two damage. What? It's not on the list. But what's a times two damage or a plus zero stun? Right. Uh, if I could do eight damage, but he's still alive, or just stun him one turn, I'd rather do eight damage. I would right. think in most cases. And then uh, you know, a plus one stun versus a plus one fire becomes ambiguous. Yep. Uh, a uh, plus zero muddle versus a plus two stun is ambiguous. Yeah, so as far as I can tell what this is saying, and it could have said it a lot clearer, is plus z status effect is ambiguous. Anytime right. you have a plus status effect, it's ambiguous and you choose. Because that's basically what's staying here. I don't think it's trying to say that stun is better than muddle. I think that could have been any. It could have been fire. Well, now I'm not clear because if you look at uh, the plus one stun versus just plus one, the plus one stun is better. Right, so... So, so, stun, so stun is... a. Uh, Stun has an effect. Has uh, yeah. So status effect is better than no status effect. Right. But when you're comparing two status effects, it doesn't matter. Right. But then somehow plus two is equivalent to as plus zero with a status effect. Yeah. Even then, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> it's it in general. If there's a status effect, it's better than without. Right. Is what I see here. But if you're choosing between two status effects, you get to pick. Uh, the ally stuff is. Pretty clear and obvious. I think. Yeah, I think so. I, 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 I'm not an ally of myself. Is important. If it says but, heal an ally, you can't heal yourself. Well, yeah. I mean, that's. I mean, to me, that's pretty standard. You know, you know, that's normally. I wouldn't. I wouldn't consider myself an ally. So no. <laughs> um, I guess I suppose some people could try and try and stretch that and you know gain the advantage. So you have to put that in there just to be just to be clear. But you know, allied monsters do not count toward battle goals. Allied monsters do not drop yeah, loot. Yeah, that part's it's all pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Uh, ambiguous or tied situations. Now, here we get to that last from that. Last yeah, part. it's basically what I said. The, the players get to decide. That's all it is. If you, if you ever get to a point that you don't know what to do, talk amongst a monster group. In general, you're probably going to do what's best for your group. Uh, in a different thread, Isaac basically said that that he assumes in those situations you're going to do whatever's best for your group, but you know what, if you're doing really well in a scenario and want to make it harder, make it harder on yourselves. That's yeah. between you and the other players. Some people are going to take the game as more of a challenge than others. Uh, now, modifier cards. That, is that, uh, that seems pretty... So that's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. I'm reading through them quick. No, those are all fine. There's yeah. nothing good there. Uh, we already covered allied monsters and battle goals. Uh, uh, yeah, the only thing that's important for battle goals is if you're exhausted, so you die in Gloomhaven, you can still achieve your goal. That's right. worthwhile knowing. Again, I found that pretty clear in this the rule book. Now, this is interesting because I, I we had to look this up. Scenario setup. What are you allowed to see and do before you pick your cards? This right. is in a very detailed order. It's all in the rule book. It just it's easy to miss. Right. We had to go through this one a couple times to eventually, because we were having a bad habit of picking our cards before starting the battle, before seeing the first room. Like, we would sit there and define our deck. Then we'd sit up and start playing and be like, oh, man, I should have took my Smash Obstacle cards, because look at all this stuff all over. Well, right. it ends up the last thing you do is pick your cards. So I do think this is worth going through. Okay. So the first thing, for setting up a scenario, the first thing you should do when starting a scenario, after going through a road event where applicable, is to look in the scenario book to get the map tiles set up. Mm. All the monsters you will be fighting prepared and apply any scenario effects. Yes. That's right off the top. That's what you do. Yeah. The important thing to know, you're going to know what the monsters are. At this yeah. point, you know. You know if you're fighting ice demons and frost demons and you're going to be fighting things with shields. Yep. That's all public info at this point, which is something we did not realize. Right. Now next, deal battle goals and choose one. Mm -hmm. After choosing battle goals, then you can decide which items you would like to equip from the ones you own, adding in minus ones to your attack modifier deck when applicable, and then which ability a card. So you set up the room, you do your battle goals, and then you stack your decks. That's correct. Right. And that gives you a lot more information than trying to pick your cards while you're still sitting at Gloomhaven. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely increases your odds of succeeding. Uh, and so what do you place on the map? When setting up, you place all the map tiles, kind of obviously, I think, uh, and then all the doors and corridor tiles and all the story point markers and objective tokens and reveal the first room. When you've revealed the room, you place everything in it. So uh, if you're doing three rooms, you only place everything in it on that first in that first room mm -hmm. as it's revealed and wait 
for the re- revelation of the second and third rooms. The funky part here is the fact they want you to put the story markers and objective tokens. Our first few plays, actually quite a few plays, we didn't even realize that those were something to put on the map. We oh, thought okay. there were just something in the scenario book that said A, B, C, and it's right. like when you step on A, something happens. I didn't realize we were supposed to put out tokens. And right. I thought, think it's interesting that you would put those out ahead of time on rooms you haven't discovered yet. I'm not right. sure exactly why that exists i guess just to give you a heads up that they're going to be objectives in this besides kill all the bad guys well i i think it's kind of interesting that you place all the map tiles as well yes. like the fact that you know what your third room looks like mm-hmm. long before you ever get there yeah um is an interesting choice when you could easily reveal it one room at a time well at least one of the players is going to know right so right. i guess it's just to keep the information fair now i'll admit on our stream i stopped doing that i think it's way more interesting to put out the rooms as we play that's right. just the dm in me i think and I think it's more interesting to the other players. And I did ask our players, I said, hey, I'd rather do it this time, but this way. And they're like, yeah, yeah, that's cooler. I don't want to know. Which right. in that case, I can't put the objective tokens out. But it's just weird, like even more so to not only know what that third room looks like, but to know that there's a big A in the middle of it. Yeah. Right? Yeah, like yeah. That there's going to be something big hmm. here. It's, it's kind of weird. Yeah. So, so when I go through that, when I'm going to go through that door, I want to be going that way and plan for, you know, heading right. off in that direction. Exactly. Um, and so the big thing is the next, I mean, which is probably a really important thing to a lot of people, is what is open information and what is hidden information to the party when setting up the map. Um, the intent and recommendation is that you try to only look at the contents of the first room, except for store doors, story point mar- markers, and yeah, objectives. Exactly. Tokens. If you got to look and at that, what do you just, just blind bizarre. yourself from the rest? Like, how do you do that? <laughs> Uh, it's like, and and but I mean also story point marker story point markers and objective tokens seem to me to be kind of the most important yeah, thing. So exactly once once you know where those are, who cares about the rest of it? That's the key. I mean that's the story point markers. It's right there in the name. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Um, yeah, it's odd. I I don't know. I, I find it very odd. Now they do know that the scenario yeah. will be easier if you choose to look at it ahead of time. Yeah. So and going back. Say, to, he also says, since all of the contents of the map had to be fully displayed in the book, it yeah. is technically open information. Yeah. Now, so, to be honest, I mean, we our earlier scenarios, we played this way. We used that to our advantage. There right. is a rule in the game, this is probably going to come up in the FAQ, because it's the kind of thing that comes up, where if you run out of monster standees, the monsters just don't spawn. Right. So we were playing a map where we'd seen the scenario book and went, well, if we just rush and open this door, it'll be empty because all of the, I forget what, undead were already in the first room. And we did that. We used that to our advantage. We're like, rush and open that door because it'll spawn with no monsters in it because they're already in this room. Which right. we couldn't have done that if, if we hadn't seen it in the scenario book. So for, I think, three games in a row, we played perfectly open info. Like, And that was when we were losing a lot. <laughs> so we were like, man, maybe this is why we're losing is we're not seeing what's coming up ahead of time soon enough. And right. that, that seemed like a valid strategy. And when I Googled it at the time, other people were like, yeah, yeah, do that. And it wasn't until later they're like, no, no, you're supposed to not know what's in the scenario book. I'm like, well, how do you not? It's it's a book. You open it. You have to use it to set up the map. Like they almost should have, they would have had to double the size of the scenario book, but they almost should have had a layout page with just room one and then flip a page. There's room two, yeah. flip a page. There's room three or something. Yeah. Well, and I, I think, I think. The, the uh, some of the apps I wonder maybe maybe take that because yes. there are so many apps available for this. Uh, it would actually it would probably be nice if there was an app that all right let's you know it gives you the layout of the first mm-hmm. room and then as you get when you open the door it shows you this and you know you can stay you could step through that way that would actually be a, a valuable app. There is one. Um, I just don't know the name about him, but there is an app out there that literally does that. It gives you a fog of war for the scenarios and oh, doesn't nice. tell you anything ahead of time. So I know right. I know it's a thing that exists. Okay. Uh, and here we go, our very next thing in components and icons. Yeah. Uh, if you run out of standees, no yeah. more are placed. But if you run out of bases, find a replacement. Yes. So bases don't stop placement, but the actual standees do. Yes. Um, uh, the starburst symbol is a damage trap, which I assume is probably Yeah, well, I <laughs> thought that was in the rule book, but that's, that's uh, fine. Well, the other thing we did wrong is I guess you're supposed to put excuse me, damage tokens on the traps on the board. Oh. So you know how much damage they do, which okay. doesn't work very well for me because I use 3D scenery, but... Right. Um, uh, condition tokens. Yeah, yeah, they don't run out. That's pretty yeah. self-explanatory. Um, so yeah, and uh, here's our big... Uh, yeah, so this is, this is the this one that is I it. found last week. Um, what's up with side B 
of map tiles L and D. They don't line up with the scenario book and the random dungeon deck. And right off the bat, this is a, a release one errata, or it's stated as a release one errata, that says those are misprints. Mm -hmm. The art is rotated by 180 degrees in relation to their puzzle piece connections when compared to the images in the scenario book and the random dungeon deck. When, using these, when setting up these tiles, make sure the puzzle connection orientation is correct and don't use the art as a reference. Which sounds great until you realize not just the art is wrong, but the actual hex grid is wrong. And you can't set it up with that. Like you can't, you can, you can put them on puzzle piece wise, but the fact the art is flipped, the grids flipped, at least on one of the rooms, it was an L room, right? I, possibly the other one, but definitely not an R1 only errata. Maybe they fixed it in the scenario book, but not the random dungeon deck. It's definitely not fixed in the random dungeon deck. I know from experience. Right. Uh, curse and bless tokens. That's were included, gone from second. There. That's gone from uh, second. And then, that's gone. Okay. So damage tokens, monster standees, and sealed envelope count doesn't match the list in the rule book. I, Are you missing items? Possibly. I doubt I'm <laughs> missing anything. I, everything seemed to be there for mine. Right. So it says so, four standees were removed in R1. So there you go. So there should be 236 yeah, monster standees. <laughs> what I count checked is to make sure I had all the actual punch boards before punching them. If I remember they were numbered or I checked the, the number. Uh, the curse deck is an R1. No, that's been fixed now. Revision 2 has symbols to show if they are a uh, monster or not. So okay. that's all good. We can skip all that. Um, damage, that's silly. Uh, this one's interesting. The, the doorway, it's worth mentioning. I remember right. looking it up at one point. So you are in a when you're in it when you're standing in a doorway, you are in a doorway doorway, not a room or tile. Yeah. Um, a uh, if two tiles are connected by a corridor token, it is considered a large room, but you are still in neither tile. Well, that's good. Yeah. That that one it came up once. Right. Uh, this uh, one was interesting coin. too because we did this wrong. Right. So if a if a monster drops a coin on a doorway and the door closes, poof. It's yep. magically gone. <laughs> I, I guess. The other I thing mean, is, I've, I've only seen a door close once in the game. It, the, normally, you can't close doors. There's no action right. to close a door. Otherwise, it'd be a really good way to kill a monster, it sounds like, based on the next question. Well, yeah. So, if you close a door with a monster on the doorway, the monster suffers trap damage and then is placed in the nearest unoccupied hex with players deciding the tie. So, you can... Apparently, doors in Gloomhaven are really dangerous. Yeah, devices. they're like the Star Wars doors, right? The, you know, <laughs> so um, <laughs> deadly doors. Yeah, apparently. But again, uh, every, every door that I've seen closed is is very much a scenario thing that happens. Right. And it's like door doors slam shut or whatever. The 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 demon shuts all the doors or stuff like that. Right. So, uh, and uh, if you this do have one's a double dumb. door, yeah, if you do have a double door, you have to open it twice to get. Both sides open. There are no actual double doors. There's just double tokens with different art. So yeah. if you happen to grab the one that has different art, you can't open just one of the doors. That just... Oh, no, this is something different. It says each double door token of a double door. So there must be a scenario that shows two doors and yeah. you have to open them all separate. So there must be, there must be two doors. All I'm so thinking is there's symbols with, like, some of the art is showing double doors. Uh, but, yeah, so if there are two doors on the scenario, you have to open both doors separately. You can't open them at the same time. Interestingly enough. Uh, this initiative was interesting because okay. I, I don't know how someone got to initiative 99 that they're not long resting. Right. Uh, so if a character has initiative 99 and a separate character is doing a long rest, which is treated as initiative 99, the character doing the long rest goes later. Yeah, I, long, again, I'm... Long rest is actually... So long rest should be considered a 99.5. I guess, Basically, I'm just not um, sure how you get to an initiative 99, but who knows? There's, Maybe there's a way. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, who knows what items and curses and things? Yep. Yeah. So when you can use an item, this was big. Okay. That, that, so that came up. We Googled this one. When exactly can I use an item? Can I use it in the middle of a movement or other ability? And can I use items outside of my turn is the question. Uh, now, Items are only used during your turn unless it is used as a reaction to the enemy, as per its wording. Or yeah, things like armor, um, 
in shields, those definitely were when you take damage or when you get hit or stuff like that. Very so clear. Unless, unless the card says reaction, yeah. uh, it's only during your turn. Or during a granted out of turn action, if that action matches the restrictions on each card. Uh, during your turn, you can use an item at any time, including but not limited to during a movement, mm -hmm. after consuming an element and gaining its effect during an attack resolution, or after you have taken all your actions, but, of course, you must meet all the restrictions on the card, which seems mm -hmm. pretty straightforward and obvious. Uh, if an item affects an attack, uh, it has to be used before the attack modifier. Right, that goes back to what we said earlier. Right. Pretty much okay. all decisions have to be made before, before you modifier. draw that card. Right. Uh, and if an item grants an action, it cannot be used in the middle of another action. So you can't split an action with an action, which yeah. I guess makes sense. Uh, and then an item cannot be used before or during the start of turn or end of turn. Yeah, that one, that, that came up quite a bit, right? So one of the interesting ones, like your boots of speed are a very common starter item. You can not start attack target to attack someone, use your boots to move to and attack someone else. Right. Because you're splitting up the action. But you can move your guy three and then go, oh, you know what? I want to use my boots and move an additional two. Right. Or even more importantly, you could move three and open a door, then see the new room, and then use your boots after the fact. You don't have to use them ahead of time. That's something that came up in our game. Um, healing potions, too. You, you can only use them on your turn. That came up where people often, after taking a big hit, want to use their healing potions only right. on your turn. And right. I know there's a ton of other item interactions. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, um, the rest of this is pretty silly. Yeah. Um. Again, a lot of it is really just as long as you're meeting the conditions. Yeah. Uh, and you do it before the you know, modifier cards are played, you're good. Um. That's so sort of this part's cool. interesting about use of an item card mandatory and then down to the next source of damage. Both of those, to me, tie together. Okay. So is the uh, use of an item card mandatory? Uh, with charges, if its conditions are met, yes. And we yeah. covered that. Uh, we, uh, we talked about that a little bit Yeah, a little bit earlier. earlier. That's but, why I'm bringing it up um, again. So when, if, the, if, if it has charges, because the use of charges is mandatory, if you meet its conditions, it must be used. Uh, and anything with passive effects is mandatory. Yeah, Everything so else is optional. The most important right. one there that I've seen of the items we've seen is armor. Right. If you get hit, you have to use your armor. If you get hit for zero, you have to use your armor. Oh, right. That is the, the, the painful one. So if yeah. an item says it's used on the next source of damage, that includes if that damage is zero. Right. So you can't save up that leather armor that saves, knocks off one damage for when you want. Now, note, shields are different. Shields you choose to use. Right. But armor has little uses on it, a tracker, and anytime you get hit, you have to use the armor even if it's for nothing. Although it says, if an item, it, uh, if an item says it is used on the next source of damage, that does not include when the damage is zero. Oh, sorry, it does not. Wow, yeah. I read that wrong. So as long as the damage is zero. Okay, sorry. I read that off wrong. Oh, yeah, so my bad. So it is not used on it with damage zero. But um, you do have to use it if damage is one or it's ten. You can't right. choose you can't. to save it up for a big hit type of thing. Right. If someone hits you for one, but you know the next guy's going to hit you for ten, yeah. tough. Um, kill credit seems... Yeah, that's fine. That's... Yeah. Uh, line of sight, because uh, I know you've had some. Yeah, line of we sight problems. we messed that up. I messed that up, and it wasn't on here that I learned that I messed it up. There was a really interesting wording of something, and I don't know if they quoted it here from the book. Well, there was. I know because I know you had some. Like there, some of it was correction in channel. We had some people uh, jumping yes. in and helping you. There was that, but then I realized something else. So one of the rules are that it says if any point of the hex touches a wall, you can't have a line of sight. Well, what matters for that is the origin point for your line of sight also can't be touching a wall, even on a corner. So right. I don't, uh, yeah, it's not explained in this FAQ very well, but there was another one where it ends up we were playing it wrong. So the yeah. exact rule was as long as you can trace a line from any point in the target hex to any point in the source hex without touching a wall, you could, you had line of sight. The right. thing we were doing was uh, grabbing line of sight from a corner. 
and going, uh, oh, but that corner is touching a wall. It happens to be touching a wall that's not between you, it's off to the left or whatever, but that's still counted as touching a wall. So we did some shots where we were like, yeah, I guess he's leaning around the door to shoot. Well, it ends up you can't. Right. Unfortunately, I don't have a good way to show that. There's no picture of it in here. Right. So I don't know if it's worth going through all of this, but the only thing that blocks line of sight are walls and doors, which is right. it. Obstacles closed, do not. Closed doors. Closed doors. Closed doors, yes. Yeah. Obstacles do not. We played that totally wrong because I put down 3D miniatures and I had all these <laughs> bookcases and stuff. And we had these golems coming from us. And we're like, oh my God, we're going to die. Halfway through that game, someone joined us, Frent and Cell, and the chat was like, you can shoot those guys. And we're like, what? <laughs> like, oh yeah, obstacles don't block. So that's important. So any non-attack ability that does not specify a range does not require line of sight. Yeah, if it doesn't have a range, that one's important. Yeah. Uh, what's a wall is all pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I think that's all. Yeah. Yeah, the whole corners and edges of walls block line of sight. They like said this this is not the best description of it there was a there was a totally different thread on board game geek that i went through and i was like holy cow yeah okay we were doing this wrong and like someone was showing off and oddly it was about pulling and pushing enemies but the actual thread was about if this guy's here can i pull him and then right. some a bunch of people like oh hell yeah you got line of sight and then a bunch of people like no you don't have line of sight and i'm like wait why doesn't he have line of sight and looking at like the miniatures it looked like you should have but just the right. way things lined up um if a figure is flying on top of something, like an obstacle, they are not considered adjacent. Yeah, that's an odd one. It's interesting. I, I don't yeah. think it's actually come up before. Um, uh, we had to look this one up about obstacles with hit points being considered enemies. That is very important, actually. came up right. in quite a few scenarios. So obstacles with hit points are technically considered enemies for most ability purposes, but are immune to negative conditions... And force, uh, force move abilities and some specific character abilities mm -hmm. uh, that would count as spoilers. So we, we'll leave those till later if we get into them. Yeah, the important thing here is that summons treat obstacles with hit points as enemies. So they are going to go attack that altar or whatever in that scenario. And right. that came up a couple times like whoa wait plus they're going if it's the closest thing you're summoning rats and skeletons they are going to go beat on the rock instead of fighting the things that are coming to attack you so that that came up with ours it was rather important um how ai how the enemy ai the npcs basically treat them as enemies right um uh if you're looking at doors and obstacles only the current state of doors matters you don't yeah. have to worry about something that may or may not open later or may close later. Um, and so open information. Uh, that we, was you know, weird. Yeah, so as long as you avoid specific numeral values and card titles, you can say whatever you want. Because again, you're, you can, you've always been able, we've always talked about how you can, yeah. you can talk in, in RPG terms about what your character, I want to go quickly, I want to go slowly. Yeah. But, so numer numerical values and card titles See, are the would, only I don't know. It's kind of ridiculous because people know my cards. If I say I'm going to make rocks fall, they know what card I'm playing. Right. I'm not using the title of the card. I've never used the title of the card. No one knows what that card's called, but they know exactly what it does. Oh, yeah. So it's one of those. That's, that's a group thing. Talk it over with your group. See how stringent you want to be with that. Note right. there are variant rules. This is something a lot of people overlook. You can play with open information. You can play with totally open hands, total cards, talk about everything. But if you do that, you're supposed to increase the monster level by one on all the monsters without increasing the XP or gold reward. Because okay. it's considered playing the game on not how Isaac designed it. Now, that's right from Isaac. Right. It's also how you play if you play solo. Because you're playing two characters and you have perfectly open information with yourself. So you're going to play better and have better cooperation with yourself than you would with another player. And you're never going to get in your own way, for example. Right. Yeah. And that's it. And trap damage, I think, goes up too. But the important thing is all the monsters are leveled up one, but the scenario level stays the same. So you still get the same rewards. Right. Um, when you're resting... Uh, the effects of a long rest occur during initiative 99. Yeah. So you or 99.5. 99.5, yeah. <laughs> so nothing, you don't get any refreshing or getting mm -hmm. your discards back or healing. Nothing happens until that initiative occurs. Yep. Uh, if you have zero cards in hand and two cards in discard, can you still long rest? 
even though you will be you will become exhausted yeah. at the beginning of the next round. Yeah, this uh, one's yes. important, and the the writer of the FAQ gets this because we have used these next two strategy. <laughs> Absolutely, you can stick around for one more round as a meat shield. Yes, and that exactly uh, goes really well for the next one. If you long rest, do your summons get a turn during the round? Yes. They go just before you, which yep. is one of the main reasons you may want to stay around one more turn. So they, they go they go at 99 while you go at 99.5. Yes, so. <laughs> exactly, which we figured out earlier. Yep. Uh, if you long rest, do you still technically have a turn for the round? Yeah, yes. I would think so. So again, that's uh, the 99.5. But not only that, remember what we said earlier about uh, items. If you yes. have a turn, you can use all your items. So if you long rest, you can also use up all those healing potions you've saved up and use that stamina potion to get some cards back before you long rest. All um, items yeah. can be used. That one's pretty important. It's Unless you are times. stunned. Again, that's the thing, right? Uh, the yes, if you're stunned, you don't get to act. Only the effects of the long rest will occur during your yeah. turn. Um, can you short rest in the last round of a scenario? Yes, you can. Hasn't come up, but I don't... Sure. Yeah. Uh, um, this one, I, come on, this is, yes, <laughs> like, I don't know, some yeah. of it's pretty, yeah. Uh, can you choose not to receive the heal or re refresh in a long rest? Yeah. Yes, you can. It's not negative. The, the only thing you have to do in a long rest is lose a card from the discard pile and put the rest back yeah. in your hand. Again, that's going to matter for some of those battle goals. Some of the battle goals are like finish the scenario with five or less health. Right. So you might want to take a long rest to get your cards back, but not actually heal your character for that reason. Right. And then uh, all the rest of the group's going to get mad at you for not healing, but that's all <laughs> part of the whole battle goal system. Absolutely. Uh, so I guess the next one's interesting. Yeah. If a player becomes exhausted and you, and you move into a new room, the room populates based on the original yeah. player count. So you don't, you don't start decreasing the monsters because somebody because died. died. Yep. Uh, sorry, nope, you <laughs> all have to face the full value uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> no matter what. Now, you may want to decrease it if you screwed up since the beginning and been putting out too many monsters, as I've now done once. Yep, <laughs> at least. Um, <laughs> you, we're not going to penalize you for correcting to the correct count as absolutely. if it should be lower. Uh, round tracker, that's just people, it's all in the rules. Um, if everyone gets exhausted, you lose. That, again, is right in the rules. Um, uh, it's worth noting, if you're exhausted, that there's no penalty for that. You get to complete everything. You get all the money. You get all the XP if you complete the scenario. But if you lose the scenario, you do not get everything. Right. Um, man, if someone's actually playing, they don't get their hit points back after finishing a scenario. Wow, that's playing on extreme that's in, a, in a different way. Yes, that's hardcore <laughs> mode. Feel free to play that way, but not us. Um <laughs> Curse and Blast cards always come out, always, at the end. You're, when you start your game, you shouldn't have any. Uh, technically, you should also remove your minus one cards for equipment, though we don't bother doing that because we tend to wear the same equipment the next game. Right. Um, and so the, can the, you... The, the prematurely thing is... You can. That's an interesting question. So is it possible to prematurely fail a scenario to avoid death, death or wasting time? So can you skip out... And not die is basically what it's asking. And the question is no. Or yeah. the answer is no. Um, so now, if all the players agree, you can save yourself time and call it failed early. Um, but so you, you know, whatever you fail. Um, yeah, I, I don't know why you would. Like, you can always get more XP and more gold why you'd quit. I guess you yeah. just get frustrated. Uh, and then if you fail a scenario, can you immediately retry it? Yes, you are yep. considered to be at that scenario. You can do a full recover and immediately run back in. Uh, and uh, you won't have to do a road event unless you return to town. Yeah, between. yeah which is an interesting one. We, we've, we've done both. We've gone back to town. Because right. that's the one thing you learn quickly. And this is very, very minor spoiler because the rule book basically says this. Road events suck. They're, they're generally bad. They don't tend to help your party much in general. So you may want to avoid going back to town just to go back to town to, you know, let one person get blessed or something. Right. Uh, and uh, <laughs> do you get all the money and treasure tiles left on the ground when you finish? No. <laughs> wow, if we would don't, be so rich if we did. If you don't pick it up before the scenario is over, 
SOL. Yes. Uh, so this <laughs> is an interesting one. It's not brought up here, but treasure tiles. Most of the treasure tiles in the game can only be looted once. Once they're looted, you literally go to the back of the scenario book and check off what you've got. Right. If you don't get a treasure tile but complete a mission, you may want to replay that mission later in casual mode because you can get that treasure. If you want the treasure tiles you weren't able to pick up, you will have to play through the scenario yes. again. Yes, but note you can do it in casual mode. Like, you don't have to right. do it as your full campaign game. You can just say, hey, let's retry this one just to get that treasure. And in that case, you get the treasure whether you complete the scenario or not. That's where I would just rush to wherever the treasure tile is and not worry about any of the the scenario right. completion awards. Or, like, the goals. Right. Um, traps and hazardous terrain. Uh, that's explained in the rules, but we could repeat it. So if you end your turn on a hex with hazardous terrain, you do not take additional damage. Yeah. Entering the hex is the trigger for damage, not, uh, not being there. Mm -hmm. um, um, traps, uh, they affect everyone. Doesn't matter who right. laid them. No I think memory. that one's pretty simple. Um, yeah. then there's the whole thing when doors close, they kill whatever's in them. That kind of yeah. came up earlier. Yeah, their doors, doors, doors are deadly to yes. everything, not just not just people and monsters. Which I say, I, I've only seen one scenario that closes the doors, and I guess it kind of fits. Right. Um, ah, that's silly. I don't think that's important. That's not important. Uh, this is important. Occupied and empty. Okay, so can you explain the difference between an unoccupied hex and an empty hex? Which is, which is interesting. It's, yeah. it's not a question you necessarily expect to hear, but an unoccupied hex has no figures present. Mm -hmm. An empty hex has no figures, token, or overlay tiles, except corridors, open doors, pressure plates, and scenario aid tokens. So the important thing there is there are a lot of bad guys that summon monsters, and I'd have to look at a card right now. They either summon into an unoccupied hex or an empty hex. Right. And then there are monsters we fought that lay traps, and they place them. And again, I don't remember what the wording is, unoccupied or empty. And I'm wondering if we screwed this up because money counts as being in a hex. It takes up right. space, and the hex right. is not empty. So if any of those cards, say it has to come into an empty hex, we've that cheated. That really limits. Yeah, that really limits where things can happen. But uh, again, I don't know empty. how the card's worded to know if this... I'm going to guess they probably say unoccupied. Right. But that also means that they should have been summoning onto traps or onto hazardous terrain. Because an unoccupied hex just has no figures or characters. Right. So I think we were screwing that up, which would be weird, because I, then i got to find out a different rule of what happens when you place a trap on a trap. Mm. Because there could have been a trap there. So I, unfortunately, I don't have the monster deck up here. My game's downstairs to look through to see what it says. Because you're not allowed to carry that up and down stairs. It's against, yeah. <laughs> uh, against labor laws. Yes. Uh, you know, I'm going to do a quick Google and see if I can find one of them. So uh, moving on, our next is player. We get into the next section, which will be player abilities. Um, I think what terms mean is generally pretty apt. Yeah. And abilities are considered an attack ability if it has the word there. attack printed on the card. Summon monsters are placed in an empty hex. Adjacent to the summoning monster. So oh, here's yeah. a new strategy for Gloomhaven. If you don't want the monsters to summon bad guys, leave the gold on the ground. Yeah. That's pretty dumb, but that is the rules. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that's good to know. We've definitely done that one wrong. That's one I yep. did not realize. Or the slimes, the ooze that split. Because you right. kill the ooze and they drop gold. Just killing ooze makes it so less ooze can spread. Absolutely. Yeah. Of course, the, actually, that makes an interesting coup because the ooze are the only monster I've seen with a loot ability, which would clean up that gold. Hey, well, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's neat. Okay. <laughs> it's an interesting way the rules interact. That's, yeah, it's probably, well, it's probably deliberate so that you can yeah. spread more ooze that exactly. way. Exactly. Yeah. Otherwise, the ooze won't spread. All right. So we've definitely done that one wrong. There, I've, I've definitely learned something reading through this today. There we go. Um, so, yeah, if it says attack, it's an attack. Uh, um, there's yeah, lots of that's, different attacks, is, but attacks are attacks. Um, added effects are still it's it's all now, pretty. If an if an ability allows you to kill, it is not an attack unless it says attack. So yes. again, attack says an attack says attack. Period. Yes. 
Damage um, is not an attack. Like that, that, that we're very clear on. That happens a lot. Because yeah. the biggest thing is shields only work on attacks. And that is very important fighting many of the elementals we faced. Now, this is interesting. Um, an ability is considered targeted if it says target or attack. So an attack is targeted as well that as one, anything that yeah. says target. It doesn't have to say target. That one's interesting. Uh, I don't know exactly when it would come up, but yeah. Yeah, it's just, you know, if, if you're, if you, I can only, you know, block targeted attacks. Well, anything that it doesn't have to say target, any yeah. attack, it's targeted. Um, let's see. Uh, if you consume an element, uh, you kill. Uh, well, that one's effect. important, actually. If I kill an enemy with my attack damage, can I still apply the effects of the attack on that enemy? And the answer is no. So yeah. attack, added attack effects are applied after the damage. If you've killed with the damage, then there is nothing left there to be pushed or cursed or trapped or whatever. See, what I want to know there is if you get an XP and the XP symbol's next to the push... Do you only get the XP if the enemies push? So if you kill them, you don't get the XP, and that's not clearly answered here. Well, yeah, that that, that would probably be on a separate in a yeah. separate section. So because that's where that would come up. Because we always joke that yeah, we push the enemy and he died, but the important part is, do I get that XP for doing it? Yeah, you know, that does make a huge difference because if he's dead, you aren't pushing him. And yeah, it's, 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 that's what that says very clearly. Yeah, exactly. You are not pushing. Which that part's not dies. important. The guy's dead. Who cares? Yeah. Well, I guess it matters for where the gold would show up. True, which yep. I guess is important, but more importantly, it's do what do you, do get you the have XP? to? That goes into the. I'd have to look at the card and see what's bold and if there's a space. If the right. push is a space, that would tell you. If there's if the if the push is in small well, font, it would be it tied to it. So it depends it which of those which of the fourteen different design card designs yeah. they've gone with. Um, is there is there a blue bar? Is there a small yes. font? Is there a capitalized? Is it bold? Is it? Oh God. Um, sorry, Isaac, but I'm, that's a fail. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, that and all those cards they showed, though, there may not be room on the cards. There was plenty of room on all those cards. Oh yeah. There was all sorts of room. <laughs> um, where are we here? Uh, uh, uh multi, uh, -huh. uh, single attack differentiations. Um, uh, we kind of talked about that again. Unless it says yeah. attack, it's not an attack. Otherwise, it's damage. Mainly right. applies to shields. That that okay. seems to be the biggest thing. And fighting the man, those sun demons with four and five shield. You want to read this section if you haven't read it. Basically, okay. if something just says damage, you just take the damage. If it's not an attack, right? Uh, can you use an ability that follows a figure to perform an immediate attack? If the figure has no current valid targets, just to gain XP? No. Uh, so no. That was a figure to me. No, yeah, you can't attack nothing. That's yeah, all that can't, is. You can't swing your sword around in the air and get XP. Yeah, yeah, that, that one <laughs> makes sense. Um, yep. Uh, Moving dooms. See, some of the stuff I have no idea. Yeah, but uh, so... Uh, the effect of death occurs immediately after the figure dies. So when the damage is done... That exceeds, it's dead right then. Yeah. And that's and that and that's when any death effects that may or may not occur somewhere in the book. We don't know. Yeah, uh, I have no idea what dooms effect, means. That's a spoiler for me. Effect, There's something in the game called dooms. Um, let's see. Uh, if attack is an element consumption. Uh, so yeah, so. Even if the monster dies, so you, you oh, you do still get it. It even says it there. It does not so that's basically the one I was talking about with the push that I have for my oh. character. It was spend a green to push. Uh, so you just so again, you have to decide if you're. At the, they said that's actually something else I learned. You have to decide, decide that before you draw the card if you're going to consume the element. Um, that's something I'm hoping to find in here with elements. Is if I consume the element, but then infuse the element. How does that work? Or if I use an item to infuse the element, can I use the element the same turn I created it using an item? Or does it only happen at the end of the turn? But I'm hoping that'll come up somewhere in here. Right. Um, we already covered the, uh, if you're doing a long rest, you can have uh, item ability yep. or ability action. Yeah, that one's important. Um, choosing I, to discard. Yeah, we talked choosing, if you choose to discard during your turn without using as an action, 
it is not considered an action. So that's, I mean, any deck builder game, you know, you can discard without playing, basically. That's what that seems, sounds like. Yeah, though, I think it's got to be, this. it's something else in your deck that says it. So right. we, we talked about this earlier, you cannot hit your allies with area effects. Right. Which uh, is an you, interesting rule. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, ex- unless the cards say otherwise, I should say, because I know I have one that right. says that. <laughs> uh, while you are not, so you cannot target empty hexes with an area attack, but well, if, an empty, yeah, if an empty, but if an empty hex is within the range, as long as you're still killing other empty, uh, other enemies. Yeah, places. that's, that's basically you get a bunch of hexes you can affect, so you can kind of play around with where it starts. Right. So as long as you're hitting some enemies, so that goes to that other question earlier, where do you have to hit every enemy? Yes, you do. If you don't want to, you can kind of target edges right. or corners. Uh, and you can't target a wall, but you can overlap a wall with area yeah. effect. Um, uh, so you can rotate. Uh, you can rotate and mirror. Yeah, that's all. Effects. That's all pretty much in the rules. Yeah. Um, that's all. That's all pretty self-explanatory. You can't mm-hmm. chat makes. I. You can't decide the blast after the fact. Right, so you can't yeah. be like, well, I hit these two, so instead I want to go this way. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Right. Add target's kind of interesting, but the important part, too, is um, if the attack is targeting a range restrictions. But even more important that I don't see on here is that all effects of the original attack happen to the additional target. So if you add target, too, you're not just adding the target for damage. You're also going to stun or immobilize or muddle or push or whatever the original attack does. Right. I don't see that here. Um, area effects are weird with add target. Like right. I almost want to, you, you're only adding one extra hex. Like you're adding that one target. You're not adding a whole new burst, I think is the best way to think of it. They go into more detail in the FAQ, but basically if you're doing an area attack and then you add in a target with the, like the extra ammo card I was talking about Oh, earlier. wait a sec. So, but it says here, add target does not add a hex to the area. But not to the area effect. Affects uh, okay. one other hex is kind uh, of what it does, right? Like it's add it adds a single extra target within range, and that target can't be someone already in the hexes. So if you okay. got an add target effect or an add area effect, you could pick an enemy within range but outside the area, and they get hit too, as if they were in okay. the area. So I said right. the way I think of it is you're adding that one extra hex to the area. So even if they were right on the edge, it would look like the area grows, but it doesn't mean that. It just means that one right. spot's getting hit too. And again, you can't not hit something, so you have yes. to attack something. You can't swing your sword in the air to get something. Yep. Um, that's probably going to come up numerous times, I'm yeah. sure. Um, this is generic. Anytime there's X, X can be zero. That's going to yep. come up on this FAQ anytime there's well, if it, But also, if X is three, you can only, you can attack, you can target two. Yes. Um, yep. So... Uh, so it, it can be ze- it can be zero or it can be less than you choose. So yes. less than less than its value. Um, conditions. Uh, uh, it's it's worth talking about probably. Uh, next turn is the next full turn. Yeah. So if you start a turn with a condition in effect, then at the end of that turn, it is removed. What's uh, interesting about that is you can do some funky stuff with your initiative there to make your conditions last longer than you'd expect. Okay. Same with uh, long rest. You're, if you long rest, that condition is going to last until 99.5. Right. And if that's a positive condition, you may want that. Okay. Um, if you apply poison... I, I think that's self-explanatory, but right. people... It did come up. So if you poison, you don't get plus one to damage on the attack you poisoned with. It's all future. So you think of it as when you hit, they become poisoned. Well, not- unless, unless you pierce. Because if you pierce, it is applied the same time as the damage. Why would that happen? Because you're pushing the... Oh, no, they're, they're just saying... They're, like, pierce is applied the same time as the damage, but why would poison? Uh, no, but, no, no, poison no. T- no, it, it's not poisons applied with pierce. It's saying all added effects are only applied after the damage, except uh, pierce. Except it's the, the wording. Okay. Pierce yeah, has nothing to do with wording. poison. Okay. Yeah, I'm pierce like, has I, to apply when you're doing the damage, because right. otherwise... I don't know. I was thinking it. You know, you're pushing the poison into the. Yeah, somebody. I guess That's no. <laughs> it's, it's the way it's worded. Right. Okay. Because it's, it's talking about all added effects happen after damage, except Pierce, which happens as you do the damage. Uh, if you're healed, both wound and poison yeah, are removed, but no healing takes place. So, 
you don't get anything back, but you lose both conditions. Um, you uh, cannot. Yeah, you can't remove positive conditions. That's yeah. interesting. Um, oh, that hurts. But yeah, I think we need that. If he gets stunned, your cards are gone. Sorry. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, we have a Rata. Uh, can a figure still perform actions prevented by disarm, immobilize, and stun, even if those actions are granted to the figure outside of their turn? No. The on their turn phrase listed okay. in the condition section of the rule book should not be there. See, we, we actually did that correctly based on the whole until the end of your turn rule. Right. We went with the whole, well, as long as that token's on the guy, they're affected by it. So that that's the same. Okay. Uh, stun does not affect persistent effects and passive items. Yeah. That makes sense. You still get all your stuff, like your shields. Or I, you can't use your shield. Here's an example going back to the shield and the armor. The shield you have to choose to use as a reaction to t suffer one damage, but your leather armor gets used automatically if you get hit, even if you are stunned. Right. Uh, if you happen to get Im become immune to a condition that you are already suffering from, that condition is removed, but does not apply to curse and bless. Um, you can be immune to curse and bless? Yeah, they prevent the card from entering the modifier deck, but they do not prevent existing cards huh. from being drawn. Hasn't come up, but interesting. Yeah. Uh, you can push, pull, immobilized, or stunned enemies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not turned to stone. Yeah. Uh, multiple conditions of the same type. Yeah, so that's... All it is is you just technically it's replaced by the new version. So right. the important part there is again until the end of your, their next turn. Right. So if the guy is poisoned and you hit him and do damage, you poison him again. It might extend that, but that's about it. Right. Now curse and bless aren't like that because they don't, they're not tokens. They go right into your deck. So the more times you get cursed, the more cards are going to go in your deck, or the more time you get blessed. Uh, nothing uh, like NP nothing uh, happens to NPCs when they get hit with curse or bless. Yeah, I don't know what that NPCs. I don't know what that is. We haven't seen an NPC, so well the summons, right? The the no, summons, they have their, the... they have attack decks. Oh, maybe. Yeah, summons do. Ha yeah, yeah summons have summons an attack. Do have deck. an attack assigned tactic. Yeah, so I don't know what NPCs are. Must be something later in the game. There must be scenario specific people on the map that don't wow. have combat decks. Oh, well, that makes me worry. There's going to be a <laughs> what do you call the escort mission at some point? I hate escort uh, missions. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so elements. Yes. Uh, just, if, you, if I consume That's... an element in the strong column, does it go down to waning no. or all the way down to inert? When you consume an, inert, an element, it's gone. Yeah. Um, timing is kind of interesting here. Uh, basically, you don't get to move elements till the end of your turn. Right. So you can't use it and consume it on the same turn. Right. Because it won't be available to be concerned until yes. the next turn. But it also means you can consume an element and reinfuse it the same turn. Right. Because it doesn't get infused until the end. So if I consume green, but I use one card that's going to consume green and another that's going to make it, at the end of my turn, green's going to still be infused, which I thought right. was interesting. Uh, and if that consumption, if your element consumption is attached to an attack, it happens before the attack. See, this isn't that clear. What they really should have said, which they said above multiple times, is before the attack modifier is drawn. Right. Like, that's the proper answer here. This is actually, I would say, a slight mistake on this FAQ. They right. made it clear above that all the decisions yeah. have to be made before it's drawn, but before the attack doesn't is not necessarily the same as before the attack modifier card is drawn. True. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, that's silly. Yeah. All right, experience, you have to do... If your card gives you XP, you have to do what's on the card to get it. Right. No, you can't choose not to. That was an interesting one for me. Level 9, you track it, but you do not actually get anything out of it. Yeah, there's no reason to actually track it, as far as yeah. I can tell, unless there's something going to be in the expansion. Well, they, they just say it's to say how well you're doing, right? So you know you're, you know... You if can, you're you that can... far in the game, you have a card <laughs> you drew at the beginning that tells you how to retire the character, start working on that. It's kind of the point of Gloomhaven. That's why there's all those character classes to unlock. Yep. Like, you shouldn't necessarily be getting to level 9 with anything until you've maybe unlocked everything. Right. Uh, so, multi-target effects. You only get effect for every target if the text states it. So, follow the text, folks. 
Yeah, there's an interesting one we haven't gotten to yet that talks about tracing line of sight that Kat's been doing wrong that I have to talk to her about. You're allowed to trace your your line of sight, your range in any pattern you want. So if you really want your arrow to do this, you can. And okay. hit six different targets on the way. It doesn't actually go in a straight line. Oh, that's odd. Yeah, I thought so too. But <laughs> I don't All know. Right. Maybe we'll get to that one down lower. Uh, if a heal specifies range, can you affect yourself? Yes. Important if you're playing the crag cart, like yep. myself. I have been doing it, I assumed. But I think range is, well, it's not range X, but I think it's one of those you can choose zero. Yeah. Uh, heal rolling modifiers. Uh, oh, that's cool. There's healing rolling modifiers. I want healing rolling modifiers. <laughs> I didn't know those exist. Uh, anytime a heal attack modifier is resolved, the figure who flipped it heals the amount specified. That's cool. Risk. I want, and it, I, want like that heal. I want that character class that has that. <laughs> wow, there's like um, multiples of them. If I draw two heal self rolling modifiers, how do you get these? What character <laughs> class heals itself? Spoilers, there's a character class that heals itself. Apparently. Um, there's a heal all too. Nice. Nice. Anyway, but yeah, you can base it. That's uh, The interesting one is the bottom one where you can heal an ability on a character that's full health. What's important to that is a lot of the heal abilities give hit XP. Yeah, I was about to say, I mean, that's got to be an XP yeah. thing. So you can't swing your sword at nothing. But you can XP, heal someone who's but healthy. But you can heal someone who's that's healthy and slightly, still get XP. Slightly contradictory. I'm surprised is, by that ruling. It's a little odd. But, I mean, I suppose you're at least doing something to someone as opposed to swinging a sword in the air. Yeah, that's that's that one's, I guess, you had to practice to cast that spell, I guess, to, to do yeah. it. You had to pray to your god or whatever done it. Yeah. So um, can you decide not to loot? Yeah, that one's interesting. No, no. you can't. That one's important, again, for battle goals. There's a lot of battle goals based on I only looted treasure chests or I only made this much gold or, oh, my God, I made this much gold. So that that one's come up. And uh, you can't, of course, loot if there is no loot to loot. So yeah, Well, that's another. See, <laughs> see like, why, don't, why do you get XP for healing fully healed people, but you don't get XP for looting when there's no loot? Yeah. That, that's, I don't like that rule. I don't, I don't like the fact that you get the XP. You can heal people that are full health. But yeah. okay. Now we know. So, um, uh, loot is unaffected by monsters or obstacles, but it is affected by line of sight. Yeah, you don't get to loot through a wall, basically, right. is what it's yeah. saying. Or around corners, I mean. Really, yes, so. which we were doing kind of wrong. Right. <laughs> um, now, end of turn looting happens at the end of your turn. That's why they call it end of turn looting. If you get pushed <laughs> over loot, you don't pick it up until it's your turn and you sit there and don't move. If you loot an item and there aren't any more copies, you gain the sell value immediately. That's interesting. That hasn't come up, but that's interesting. That's that's probably uh, a later game. Uh, yeah. I, another regret, interesting though. one, too, is um, when you find stuff, you can't equip it right away. If you already have some, which is kind of weird, because even if you don't, because you can only equip stuff between scenarios. Which I thought was odd. So if you loot a magic sword, you can't use the magic sword for the rest of the adventure. I I, I get that when it comes to armor, because I mean you can you can consider that armor taking stripping off armor yeah, takes time. But, it's, it's but a sword, weird. a sword seems a little like sword yeah. or shield. Well, part of it is you have to decide what items to bring with you, and you have to decide handed items and everything. So you probably have an item in your hands already. I at that point, but even if you don't, you don't get to suddenly start using it. So that's that's an important one. I don't think we've broken that rule. I don't think we screwed it up, but it's worth knowing that you don't get to equip except during that scenario setup, which we talked about the order of earlier. Right. Uh, that one's important, uh, too. If you loot an item you already have, you immediately sell it. Now, right. again, weird. Why would they make you immediately sell it, not sell it when you're back at Gloomhaven? But whatever. I, I think it's just... Oh, it's interesting that it does go in the city's available supply. Yes. Even though, Anytime yeah, okay. you sell something, it goes in the city's supply. Right. Even So even if you're stuck in the middle of uh, some other dimension, it still goes <laughs> into the city's supply. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think we can skip all this. Again, yeah. X. That, that the, the, the whole X can be zero is in here. Many, many. or Zero or less. Yeah. Whenever move three, twelve, whatever. Move 12, you can move one. You can move not at all. Yeah. Um, um, straight lines at uh, straight lines on hexes. You can't turn around. You can't turn back. Um, and it has to be one direction. You can't zigzag. Uh, the last hex is treated as normal movement. So if the last hex has difficult terrain, it costs two movement points. Yes, um, that's even when jumping. Right. Which is the important part there, or flying. Well, no, flying. You never land. Uh, 
Again, push and pull, it has a number. It has an X. You can push pull zero, you can push pull less than the total amount. That's in yep. here so many times. People people get confused by absolutes in the end. Uh, yes. Uh, you can push pull flying enemies through obstacles and allies. Yes. But uh, they don't take damage from... Uh, they can't end on them. That's uh, right. the important yes. part. Yeah, and then, and even even on even ground enemies, you can push pull through other figures, but again, not end there. Uh, so you you can push pull enemies through enemy figures. Enemy but, figures, yes, but not but allies. Not, don't. not allies. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, unless entering the hex kills the enemy being push pulled. So if you pull them through hazardous terrain and it kills them. Um, <laughs> where there's already someone yeah it's interesting yeah. so 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 if you got whatever a f demon standing on flames you can push another demon into the same flames as long as it kills them that no i i uh oh yeah so yeah yes yeah yes you're right yes yeah, that's that's I was interesting. just double checking the reading there yeah I, that hasn't it might have come up huh i'll have <laughs> to remember that um flying you can push pull them everywhere yeah uh allies cannot be targeted at all even if it isn't an attack yeah, yeah, it's the usual. You can't yeah. target your allies. Flying monsters can be pushed into traps, uh, but, but doing it so will not trigger. No, they just stay on top. Uh, yeah, all the traps come out of the ground. One of these days, some wizard in Gloomhaven is going to make a fire trap that comes from above, and that'll change the rules. Right. Uh, swap teleport is considered forced movement, in case yeah, that comes up. I haven't seen that yet, but sure. Um, retaliate. Yeah, this is... Funky. Uh, retaliate's not an attack, and it doesn't have targets, so it just kind of happens all the time, no matter what. Which no, is it happens what's after important. All the effects have been yeah. applied. So at the end, after after resolution, basically, yeah. retaliation occurs. It's going to hit you, and and like that doesn't matter if you're invisible. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have something that says you cannot be attacked. It's not an attack. It's damage. Right. It also so shields don't work. Right. So if you're if you're killed, you can't retaliate. If you're pushed out of the way, you can't retaliate. Yeah. Uh, but if you're pulled into range, you can retaliate. Um. So that's an important thing. So if you're, you know, I don't know if they've got some pseudopod reaches out, some tentacle reaches out and drives. No, there's you. there's range to retaliate. There definitely are. Right. We've definitely uh, seen them. Uh, retaliation is not an attack or targeted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it's interesting because then like your again your armor doesn't work because it says the no surface damage from an attack for some reason retaliate doesn't get blocked by that right. so it's, it's it's interesting uh, if you have multiple shield abilities you don't have to use all of them but you do have to use one uh, mm -hmm. right because that's part of the whole we've talked about earlier you can't not use things yes. but if you've got multiples you only have to use one it's kind of funky but yes yeah. Uh, how long do shield and retaliate last? Is that important? I, um, yeah, I guess. That's just kind of funky. It's all pretty self-explanatory, but it is funky. Uh, so, if uh, shield, how long do shield and retaliate last? If they are on a card with charges, they activate only for the effect that triggers the use of the charge. So an example of that are many of the brute abilities are like that. Where it's every time you get hit, or uh, the Craig Heart's got a bunch too, that from the next source of melee damage, retaliate to, it only happens that source. I don't have retaliate right. from anything else. Right. Uh, if they are on a round bonus ability card, they are active for the remainder of the round or until you remove the card from the active area. Yeah, so again, with the Craig Heart, I have an ability where everyone takes one damage but gets shield too. And that stays there until that card goes away at the end of my end of the next turn. And persistent bonus ability card, they are active until the card is removed from the active area. It makes sense. Yep. Uh, and if they are uh, from attack modifier cards or a regular ability card, they are active for the remainder of the round. Yeah. Like I said, it's, it, that part's a little funky, though. I don't, I don't think we ever had any confusion with it. Right. Uh, summons don't loot. No. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty self-explanatory. We, yeah, I mean, we've talked allies, summons, none of that. They don't loot. Nope. Um... Uh, all of this is, is all basic rules, right? For oh, for summons, 
Obstacles have 99 initiative. Now, that's interesting because ob if obstacles have 99 initiative, which happens first, the obstacle or the long rest? 99.5. Long rest is always last. We know that. Right. So, 90, so, so obstacles, yes. obstacles, your wall happens before you rest. Yes. But, like, again, when summons attack obstacles, that goes with that hole that obstacles with hit points are considered enemies. That right. was something we didn't mess it up, but we thought was interesting when we were playing. Like, oh, wait a minute. That means they're going to do this. So, the only time that's going to come up is. If you have a summon standing there, and you have an obstacle, and you have a character long resting, they'll attack the obstacle. Right. Because long rests are always last. Now, right. or if they're standing between two obstacles, they both have 99 initiative. Which is kind of weird, like, well, the fact obstacles have initiative. It just, I, it was an interesting way to have to deal with you need to blow up a, a, an altar or something, right? Right. Yep. To work it into the rules. Uh, no, your summoner cannot receive the effects from modifier cards drawn by their summons. Um, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know there were cards that could give you item refreshes. Again, where, yeah. where is this class with all these heals and refreshes? <laughs> I'm well, you've to, still I'm got to, boxes to learn. Oh, I got tons. We haven't, we haven't even opened the original six. Uh, I have monster turns. That's self-explanatory. Two different monsters, same initiative on different which goes first. Yeah, that's important. Two different monsters have the same initiative. And worth noting, if a player also has the same initiative, player goes first, and then you decide. It's considered one right. of those ambiguous things. Yeah, so any anytime it's ambiguous, the players decide. Yeah, but it's always players before monsters if you get the same thing. Right. Um, if a monster is revealed at the end of the round, this was important. A monster revealed at the end of the round is is spawn. This doesn't count as opening a door. The opening a door is not the end of the round. That's still part of your turn. This is one of those like a scenario effect that says at the end of the turn something goes up. You don't have it act right away. Whereas right. when you open a door, it doesn't matter if you're on initiative ninety nine somehow. Every monster in that room is going to go. They uh. always activate the turn they they spawn onto the board. But if something shows up at the end of a round, which is something that would have to be a scenario effect, that's different. Another one to mention that I don't know if it's on here is summons. The turn they're summoned never act. Doesn't matter who summoned them, players or monsters. The round they're summoned, think Magic the Gathering, summon sickness. They don't get the right. Go. Right. Um, yeah, so again, I, anytime you, you've got any sort of confusion and, or ambiguity, the yeah. players decide. The players decide. Um. What uh, is considered an action for a monster? Yeah, it's, it, thankfully it's not nearly as complicated. Each line's a separate action. Right. Well, that's easy enough. That the, Compared to the, the, the complicated player cards. Um, one of the important Monsters. ones, people, this is, this is people, new, new players make this mistake. If the monster card doesn't say attack, it doesn't attack. If it doesn't say move, they don't move. Yeah, Very they important. only do what's written on the card. Only do what's written on the card. So if it says shield six, heal two, that's all they do. They sit still, they put up shields, they heal. It's also worth knowing that shield doesn't come up until they hit their initiative. Very important, because if you get to go quick, you can hit them before those shields are up. Same right. thing with retaliate or any other ability they do. It doesn't happen until their initiative hits, which skips about five of these questions. <laughs> uh, now, if a monster has a bonus like shield or reta retaliate on their stat card, yeah. it is always active. That's different. If it's on the card, the stat card, it's there. It's a permanent ability. But if you draw it, that's, uh, it goes on the initiative on the card. Right. Um, this was an interesting one we screwed up. Uh, if all monsters of a type are destroyed, and then you get new ones show up in the game, you shouldn't have shuffled the deck. So this is something, don't get in the habit of, I've killed all the bad guys, clean up everything. Just leave it out on the table, because you never know, some monster two rooms from now may summon new ones. Right. Uh... Closest is measured uh, requiring the fewest normal movement points, and then by proximity. Yeah, it's one of those ones for things where they summon stuff or place traps. Yeah. It's They put it closest to an enemy. Uh, that, I, we found, has been ambiguous many times. Right. Uh, and there's an errata when it comes to monster attacks. Okay. Uh, page uh, 31 of the rulebook regarding mon mon mul monster multiple attacks. Should read, if the monster can target multiple figures with a single ability, instead of, if the monster has multiple attacks. 
yeah, there's nothing where it'll say attack twice. Well, actually, I have seen cards say attack twice on the card. So, yeah, yeah. that's trying to clarify if you can target three, for example, versus um, there were some, I think it was wolves or something, where they actually had an attack, a move, then an attack. That right. would be multiple attacks, where this is talking about targeting multiple people. Yeah, um, so, yeah, if if a monster ability card has multiple attacks listed in different lines, they are considered separate abilities. Yeah, that says each be line on the is same a separate target. ability. Uh, and so they will go after the same target until dead or exhausted. Yeah. Um, and again, this is this is one of the funky things. If we get the monster focus, I'll probably just skip it because those rules are so complicated. But the <laughs> monsters are going to choose their focus. They're going to move. They have to hit their focus. Then they're going to try to hit as many other people as they can. But they have to hit that focus with their best attack. They'll even move away from that focus so they don't have disadvantage. And then try to hit other people. Um, monster focus and monster moving is is like a whole separate show. I'm sure there are people who've done videos on it and probably still gotten it wrong. Uh, right. If we do get to that, I'm probably going to skip that stuff because it's just, it's it's overly, I've read so many flipping pages of <laughs> how to use the AI. So bosses are not elites. That's important. And bosses only do their special attacks when their ability card says so. That's a question someone writes in because they haven't actually played a game or fought a boss yet. It's very evident when you play. Like, right. you're like, oh, this boss has all these abilities. How do they use them? And then you look at the boss deck, and it says special one, special two on all the <laughs> cards. You're like, oh, okay. Right. Um, so, invisible characters? Do we, uh... uh... You can, but the big thing is they consider them obstacles. So, right. they don't focus on them. They can't move through them. They won't target them. Um, they are considered obstacles, so even an area effect won't hit them. Like that, they're obstacles. Like I, yeah. I think it's it's pretty pretty interesting. Now you can do some funky stuff. Like the important part here is if you turn invisible in a doorway, the monsters aren't going to move because they can't focus on anything past you. So that right. one's pretty interesting. So we're all ranged enemies still may be able to shoot over you. Yes, because um, remember obstacles don't block line of sight. Right. Uh, but again, like, it looks like you can you can create some edge cases using invisibility where yeah, in a doorway is a big one. It's yeah. it's kind of silly. Uh, if a monster is disarmed, That's will it move as if it had an attack? No, I think we disarm that wrong. negates all effects of having an attack and will move as though it doesn't have an attack, which means it will just try and close on focus. Which is interesting. So if you disarm an archer, they're going to move up into hand to hand. Right. That's and we may have done that one wrong. Hmm. Uh ability bonuses affected by stunning a monster. If they're on the card, then I think you get them. Uh bonus only affected list. But yeah, listed uh abilities listed in the monster's stat card yeah, are those, unaffected exactly. by stun and are yeah. and are continuously available. They're still gonna happen. Anything you drew on the card's ignored. Um what happens if a non-stunned monster draws a card that gives it an on-death effect, but then gets stunned before it dies? The effect is applied, even if the monster is stunned at the time of their death. Okay. So on-death effects hmm. happen regardless of stunning. That one's interesting. I, again, I haven't seen that come up, but sure. Yeah. Um... Uh, so, being uh, if a figure is immune to curse, that only affects the shuffling the curse dark card into the deck. If yeah. they draw it, it still happens. That came up earlier too, which is an interesting yeah. one. Yeah. Um, I don't think the doors is important. Yeah. Uh, elements? Are you worried about elements? Yeah, because this was important. Um, when the first monster takes its turn. All monsters of that type are going to get benefit because it's not like the first skeleton uses up the red infusion in the room. All right. of the skeletons that turn are going to get to use the red infusion. But only the ones that have been revealed already. Yeah, if something new shows up later, then it's it's gone. So that one's kind of important. Uh... Again, uh, focus, We I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm thinking we're going to skip monster focus because okay. it's rough. It's... Uh... Yeah, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty meaty. Uh, <laughs> uh, combined control? Do we care? It happens. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think that's all explained in the rulebook pretty clear. When you mind control, they're considered an enemy by other monsters and an ally by your characters. Right. 
Uh, monster movement. Yeah, that one's kind of interesting. So what that is, is if a monster can't move, so for example, that ancient artillery we fought, you can't give them a move ability, but you could give them a move plus. Okay. So the other way around. If you give them move three, so if you move three them, they can move. But if you give them move plus three, they can't. Right, because they have a zero. So because they have a zero. That one's a little funky. Right. Okay. Uh, a monster will only move away to maximize its current attacks. Yes, so generally that's one square away, so that it won't have disadvantage. Right. Uh, uh, another yes, one with attack X and a plus X are two different things. So if you give something attack X, it now attacks at whatever X is, whereas if you give it plus X, you're going to add it to its base attack. Right. Uh, so there is a separate list specifically for uh, examples of monster movement. So yes. I don't think we're going to cover Again, that one tonight. Monster movement, it's, my god! Yeah, there, there, the best thing you find on Board Game Geek is there's a quiz with I think there's 32 questions in it, and I got almost all of them wrong. Like it was bad. <laughs> like it's. Oh. oh yeah, that's actually what that link is. That's is it the to the quiz? Oh yeah, it's to the it's, quiz. Whew. And and uh, there's so many. I don't know. Like that's it's yeah. worth going through at some point, but not we're not going to talk about it here. 32 questions, I think. Yeah. Uh, and they're rough. Like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, monster summons. Um, how do you distinguish between summoned and other enemies? Uh, you can place extra yeah, this scenario is tokens. If you have trouble keeping track. Uh, that's a uh, silly question. Just keep, what it is is summons don't drop money, so you have to keep track of what was summoned. Right. Uh, and now this is kind of interesting. If something that summons monsters dies, its summons do not die. No. Once it's so, summoned, they're there. Now, characters, if a character becomes exhausted, you lose all your summons. Right. So that is a slight difference between uh, players and the monsters. Right. Uh, monster traps, we already covered that with other yeah. stuff. Yeah, now here, here's the, the big thing. one we screwed up, because right. this is not clear in the rulebook at all. How are sanctuary donations, road and city events handled when playing scenarios in casual mode? Scenario donation or sanctuary donations and city events can only be done if the last scenario played was in campaign mode. Yep. So, so you can, yeah. So you you can you can start your turn if you played a scenario. You can start your turn by doing some uh, sanctuary and city events. Only if the last game you played was campaign. Yeah. Right. So what's weird there is if you then play a random dungeon. You're going to have all those blesses from the sanctuary. Right. But then when you finish that and you go to play your next campaign game, you, you can't won't. get blessed. Right. Which is weird. Like, it almost just should be you can't get to use bless cards in random dungeons or something or when playing casual. Right. And then that way, when you buy them in the campaign, the next time you play the campaign, you'll get them. Like, right. it's funky. We, we screwed this up big. Like when, and, yeah. and, and, and wrote, later and wrote in the game... Events. Later in the yeah. game, blesses are important. That's all I'll say without spoiling much. It's pretty self-evident because there's a little checkbox thing in the main rule book. So obviously you're tracking how many times you donate for a reason. Uh, we donated, I think, eight times that we shouldn't have at this point. So I still haven't decided what we can do about that because that's changed other things in the game. So And, and also, while Sanctuary and City events require the last scenario to be campaign, yeah. Road events require the next scenario right. to be campaign. Again, that's that one's clear in the rules. We didn't screw that right. up. That one's very clear in the casual mode uh, of the rule book. Says you only do a road event when doing a campaign, which makes perfect sense. But the yeah. sanctuary donations, the city events, I, if it's in there, I completely missed it. And if you are playing ca casual mode, when you restart your campaign, you are in the last location you were in. You does not the the casual mode does not move your characters within the scenario. Yeah, which is funky the because campaign. in casual mode, you can almost cheat. Because you could, in casual mode, go back to Gloomhaven, do a bunch of shopping, go do a three-room dungeon, and then go back to campaign mode, and suddenly you're somewhere else, you don't have to travel. But you got right. the benefit of going to Gloomhaven. Though that's not as big now that I know you don't get to do a city event, because city events tend to be positive. Well, it depends. No, because you would do the city event because the city event requires your... You oh, that's have true. You would have. Yeah, so you would have. city event. So, uh, yeah, the that, road that, event you wouldn't get, which that, is the negative. That seems like a, a slight abuse of the rules. It does, Like, yeah. I would have just assumed that travel would have still counted. You just didn't have to travel. Right. Odd. 
Uh, no, your experience doesn't go to zero when you level up. Yeah, uh, what? what? I don't know <laughs> why anyone... That? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I guess the next one's important, though I find it very clear in the rule books. Uh, how does your pool of ability cards work? Uh, it's set... Uh, is the set of cards you can choose when you, when you start a scenario... Uh, the cards in your hand are the cards you actually play the scenario worth with and are limited based on your class. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're level one, you get level one cards plus the three X cards in your deck. All other cards are unavailable to you. When you level up, you take a single card of your new level or lower from the deck of unavailable cards and add it to your pool. In this manner, a level nine character will add eight more cards to their pool over the course of leveling up from level one. Yeah, that's it's pretty all straight. pretty clear. Uh, this one was important because Tori did it wrong. Your perks, if there's multiple checkboxes, that means you can take them more than once. You oh. don't have to save up multiple checks to buy it at, say, three. Oh, nice. So, okay. yeah, Tori was doing that wrong. I've been doing it right all along. I think the rest of the brutes have been doing it all right. But, um, like, he was looking. He's like, oh, I didn't take that. It takes three checks. And I'm like, no, it doesn't. It means you can do it three times. Right. So that's a big change. So he's got lots of stuff to do with involves just removing minus one cards and adding plus one cards. Because right. I, I don't know why he thought that would cost three checks to remove one card, but I get it. Uh, does the ignore negative item effects perk apply to any negative effects other than minus one attack modifier cards? No. Yeah. There, there's, well, <laughs> I, to me, that's a spoiler. That means there's no items in the game that have negative effects. Well, no, it doesn't say that. It just says that they only apply, apply to that. Yeah, I guess. I, I would assume it says ignore negative item effects would apply to any other ones, and there just aren't others. Because I thought it was self-explanatory that yeah. you don't add the minus one modifier cards. And seriously, the armor's way better if you take that perk. Right. Uh, can I choose not to level up? No. Yeah. No, uh, and you have to take checks if you get it. Yeah. You, you, if you lose a check mark, you do not lose a perk. Yep. Uh, if you unlock a character class through means other than retirement and it is already unlocked, yes, you do get the bonus of random scenario and item design. No matter how a character class is unlocked, if you trigger it, you still gain the bonus. Yeah, whenever you, this is something that we obviously haven't seen, when you get a new character, it'll have numbers on the back of it, and that's new stuff you're going to add to the decks in the game. So that's something that hasn't happened yet. No. Um do I keep personal my quest. personal quest secret? Weirdly, in the rule book, it does say yes, which it says there's no official rule on this. But somewhere it says that it's your hand and you don't talk about your hand. So I guess it's a roundabout way of saying no. I We've all kept them secret. Yeah. Hey, but, say, there's no, they say there's no official rule. I like to keep mine secret. So, yeah. it's, you know, do what that, you that's will. A how do you retire, right? How right. is your character retire? Uh, there's a rule. Uh, no. uh, yeah, version that's gone. one. That's, um, don't worry about that. Newly created characters. Are we worried about lineage? I don't have no idea what lineage is, so I think that's a spoiler. That's uh, when you retire uh, a character, you get to open this book of heroes. I'm guessing right. it has something to do with that. So we have an errata here. When retiring, can players donate to the sanctuary and give the blessed cards to their next <laughs> character? Okay. So <laughs> apparently, it the says player. It says player, oh, and right. it should say character. No, it's just silly. so. Oopsie. I would uh, go with the, the whole rule you're not allowed to give items or gold to other characters, and that would be the equivalent. Yeah. That's a silly one. But all right, sure. You can't you can't will uh you can't will your blesses to the next uh yeah, that's, the next it's, version. A, it's an odd one. Enhancements is something I haven't even unlocked in the game. Uh they're mentioned in the rule book. I kind of skipped over that section. So uh, at this point I don't know if we want to read these off or not because No, we can skip. I don't we want to we want to spoil it for you or other people. So. Yeah. Uh, it just it's in the main rule book and I'm assuming it's explained clearly, but we haven't actually unlocked those yet. Right. Uh scenario effects. Uh if I have the ignore scenario effects perk, can I ignore the effects of event cards? No. No, it's scenarios only. <laughs> That's why it says scenarios. Your 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 city and road events aren't scenarios. And I if think you have silly. And if you have the ignore scenarios effect perk, you cannot choose to take them. Yeah, you've chosen to ignore them, so suck it up, Buttercup. Yeah, again, <laughs> I have to assume that's one for for battle goals. That yeah. the, the, there must be some reason you would want the negative effect to happen. More than likely, uh, uh, I did think it was interesting that summons aren't helped by your perk. 
Right. So that's, 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 I don't think it's come up, but if you have it, ignore scenarios. Well, sorry, your summons are still cursed or whatever. Right. Uh, how do you track lost prosperity? However the heck you want to. If you've lost it, make a note. Come on. Uh, <laughs> well, no, it's something you mark on the actual board with a right. permanent. Uh, we've been doing it with a permanent marker. I didn't know you could lose it. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Like, lost prosperity. That's, that's what you, you Yeah, I didn't know you could lose prosperity. Spoiler. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if characters drop in and out of a party, yeah, which ones are affected by the results of events, both road and city? Yeah, Only the characters that are present. Are uh, when the event card is resolved. So yeah, that kind of makes sense. Uh, if players take a day off, they don't uh, they don't get affected. Yeah, which w- would have mattered more if you were doing them when you do random dungeons like we were. <laughs> right. So now this this one is interesting. If you're f- and 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 you know you were you were talking about how before you had you had uh, been choosing your cards earlier. Yes. That you needed to. Um, yeah. But if you are forced to discards because of an event. You have to, and you haven't chosen your cards the way you're not supposed to. Yeah. Um, you have to build your deck and yeah. then do that discard. So later yes. on. Um, Which is interesting because then you could put in a card you don't want because you absolutely. know it's going to be discarded. Yep. But then, I mean, so you still take the hit. I mean, you're still one card short, but you've chosen which card you're short. Um, you can leaving. consume items during a road event. That's interesting. So I assume that's probably heals. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's interesting. <laughs> I'm guessing uh, some road scenarios probably specifically say. Yeah. Uh, unavailable means unavailable. Uh, yeah, it's equip pretty... And equip it on, yeah. Um, you uh, only do road events when going to a scenario, yes, not, not when back. returning home. Yeah, that's right in the rules. The most uh, interesting are these typos on the city events. Make me wonder if... Uh, Basically, what it means is everything. Well, these are each. all these are all release one though. Yeah, but the other thing too is all it means is everything's each. If it says yeah. lose one something, gain five something, gain one check, it means every character. That's all that's right. pointing out. So uh, there is a spoiler here, but it doesn't seem. Uh, yeah, I haven't clicked on that. Crazy vital. It's uh It's literally just a rune. Um. So. Yeah, I have no clue. No, I did. it doesn't mean anything to me, but that's fine. Um. Scenarios. Uh, uh, if the, so, if a character has already been created, you don't have to go back to Gloomhaven to swap that character in. That's but if they have not cre- been created yet, you do have to go. So you can only create a character wow. in Gloomhaven. But once a character is created, they can be swapped in and out freely. That's interesting. So that, that mainly comes up during linked events. So that's when you can go right at the beginning. You see these. The first three yep. dungeons are linked, which means you don't have to go to Gloomhaven in between. So if you start off with a party of three and you do the first mission, you could technically add your fourth a fourth player in without having to go back to Gloomhaven. Right. That's different. So and here we go. Here's the big yes. rule that that hurt. If you play a random dungeon from the random dungeon deck, they do not progress the campaign in any way. Yeah. They do not trigger road events or city events, unlock new scenarios, gain town prosperity, or anything else that would impact the campaign world. Oh, yeah. They only help character progression, not city or scenario progression. Yeah, the important one there is that I couldn't find any of the rulebook that said you didn't do city events. And then we've had city events that caused us to gain town prosperity. Well, so, see, and he, but now, again, as long as you're previous event according to the earlier rule yeah as long as your previous event was a scenario and not random yeah. then you're okay well what it sounds like we probably have to do for the live stream is we have to do gloomhaven at the end of the game instead of doing it at the start right and then have everything set up and ready to go for the next game so yeah. we have to the only problem with that is i'd rather do it at the beginning yeah. Like read off those events and head off to town or whatever. That way we don't have to remember what we do last, a random dungeon. The other thing too is there's no rule here for it, but if I had played tonight solo and did a random dungeon, then the next game we played, Tori and Kat played and I didn't. They're gonna get penalized for me doing the random dungeon. Right. Which is kind of silly. Or do they or do they get the effect and you don't like or No, because like, I'm controlling right. the party. Right. I happen to be one member of the party, but I'm using the party sheet. So the right. party went and did something, even though the party's only me. Right. Because otherwise you could do some funky RPG stuff like split the party. 
Right. You guys go do a random dungeon while I go to town, and then you get the bone benefit because our last play was a campaign play, even though you weren't there, right? Like, it's it's funky. Right. Yep, yep. No, I get that. That's weird. Um, here we go. Uh, do bonus penalties from random scenario cards last one round or for the entire scenario? Unless otherwise indicated, it is the yeah. entire scenario. This uh, is all... I'd skip all the rest of this. This is all pretty... Okay. Uh, permanent death variant. If you want to play hardcore mode, go ahead. It's hardcore mode. I mean, everyone yeah, knows I, what that means. I'm not. I didn't real, bother even reading those rules. Not for me. Real, real gamers know what that is. Uh, so we'll skip we've all got, these. Yeah, we're gonna skip some uh, spoilers here. There are personal quest spoilers um, that are basically. I don't know. I, I uh, have, I'm, I'm there's just so many personal here. quests that. So basically. Um, there, if, if you if you aren't sure uh, which scenarios are affected within a specific personal quest, you can come here and check. Yeah. So they actually they actually uh, enumerate. You know, in this personal quest, this me this text means these scenarios. So that list is available here. Should yeah. you uh, require it? And the ones below, I would have to say these are probably also spoilers in a way. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm gonna like even though that. they don't say spoiler, but the important yeah. one is uh, if you have to kill a certain number of things, you have to do the killing blow. Um, uh, your I, condition to... has to be true at the time you retire. So, say you have to do a certain thing and you get there, but then that changes, you can't retire. Right. Uh, there is a second sentence on page 48 of the rule book regarding announcing retirement, and that should read, the character may perform any other town activities before retiring. But not bless your next character. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't you know like why yourself. you'd pay to bless. Well, I guess you could. there's reasons you'd pay to bless. Never mind. Yeah, okay. Um, like, um, I don't know. All the rest of this is like, for quest card 518, do random scenarios count? So it's probably complete X scenarios. Uh, actually, here's an interesting one. If you have to kill a certain number of something, do you have to lay in the killing blow? Yes. Yep. Yes, you do. Uh, the, you get uh, your and but also your summon. So you, uh, if you've got a summon, they you get the credit for their kill. Wow. Okay. So this monsters section again is based on very. I these are spoilers. Okay, I wouldn't have considered these spoilers. Well, you'd have to turn spoilers on if we talk about this. Um, but it, it, it's all monster cards and what they do. I had no idea. Oh, there's a... Okay, it's an R1. Yeah, yeah, there's that, that's the errata. Um, erratas look like all... War, the, it looks like the erratas are all uh, R1, so I think everything else is just clarification. Yeah, again, uh, I, I find it very odd that they consider these spoilers, but sure. I guess people don't want to know what the bad guys do. Yeah, if you, well, if you don't, I mean, if you don't know that there is Monster X in the game. Yeah, well, you know, no, that, you know, because you have, you have all the standees and everything, but realizing that Living Bones have a card that does X is surprising that they consider that a spoiler. All okay. right, I think we'll skip over that then. And yeah, plus, no. uh, scenarios, there's lots of typos. Lots wow, of typos. there's some bad At least ones. One. Well, uh, let's see. Like, scenario 10, I know we finished, and we looted the wrong treasure. That's our one. No, that's our one. Oh, I should check mine, just in case. Um, so, oh, yeah, there's, so there's, there's a, a too lot many. of, it's, it's sad. Yeah. It's like every um, third scenario, two, then nine, 10, 11, 12, 14, 19, 20, 21, 25, ah, here we 27. Go. Look at this. Random scenario cards, cards, 542, 546 and 549 art should be rotated 180 degrees. And that's not our one. Jeez. Also on card 535 icons and tile overlays should be mirrored. Wow. Yeah, it's disappointing. Oh, uh, so they've managed to screw up the art in what? Because are they are threes out already, right? Or is it still? A I think it's all still R two. Oh, okay. Um, as far as I know, the third printing they didn't change anything this time. Right. All right. So we have gone for two hours and eleven minutes. At this point, everything's basically spoilers. Yeah. Everything's it's... very specific character class stuff. And actually, there really, I mean, there's nothing except for items and character class yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm scrolling it's through. It's, it's all, this is all, all the stuff we're not going to be able to talk about. Um, right. Some of the items are important because these come up. We'll do these quick. Uh, boots of striding only add to existing movement. They're not a move on their own. That came up. Um, 
uh, shields, we talked about this earlier. Hide armor is one of those ones that ticks off. So any shield that's for a ticked off thing only happens for that one attack, not the round. Um, no leather There's... armor has to be used before the enemy draws an attack modifier card. Um, item 13, there is an errata. Oh my god, that's terrible. Wow. Well, that changes our game. We just, every person in the party just bought this item. So here's a good one for you people paying attention. The awesome Potion of Stamina only gets you one card back now, not two. I, I want to ignore that difference. one. I want to, I, I probably difference. wouldn't have spent the money. That They nerfed that card huge. Because two actions is another round, right? That lets you get another long rest in. Wow. I'm a little uh, bummed. Item 34 is the is a, is actually the same sort of thing. I don't know. Uh, the oh, same errata. I it's, don't uh, know what that is. I bet you it's yeah. one that lets you recover three cards. Um, and they, I don't have the rest of these. That sucks. I'm just looking to see what's errata and what's not. Arr, it was, that's frustrating. <laughs> uh, and so the only other errata, so there's an item 34 has errata. I'm not um, going to say what it is, but yeah. it's there. And also item 141 has an errata. The rest is all just clarifications. Wow, that's that's big. That I can't believe they nerfed that. That that's there's a an actual video game style nerf. They made that card half as useful. And and, and it looks like and I and I'm guessing that they've realized that they have done that. That wasn't a typo. That's an errata. that's uh No, that's that's a rule change. It. That's a rule yeah. change. That's that's a nerfing. <laughs> yep. Yeah, other than that, uh, just go to it. We'll link it in the show notes uh, under the show here on YouTube once it's there. I've linked it in the chat already. Not that we have anyone really watching us right now. But yeah, that, there, I definitely learned some things. Now, whether I remember all those things <laughs> is yet to be seen. And oh my god, as as completely strange and unlinked to... Uh, unlinked to this whatsoever, it was just announced by Board Game Geek... That not only Kingdom Hearts Talisman, but yeah. Batman Talisman. Oh, wow. I knew about Kingdom Hearts. I shared that yeah. the other day when I heard about it. No, no, the one I'm excited yet. about is WizKids, who makes some really good games, got the license to G.I. Joe and Transformers. And Transformers, yes. Like that I'm excited about. And My Little Pony, which yeah. my kids may be excited about. There's already some good My Little Pony games out there. But yeah, I couldn't believe that when I saw that. G.I. Joe and Transformers. Which probably means we're just going to get a bunch of hero clicks. But you never know. They make other very good games. Yeah. So yeah, Batman Talisman and uh, and USAopoly has also got the uh, the new Harry Potter duels coming out this year. Yeah, there's a which is the, an actual two player uh, Hogwarts battle. It's a one on one competitive Hogwarts battle. So just some notes on the stream. Streaming upstairs to downstairs, zero point zero one percent drop frames. Yeah. So the Wi Fi. It's, it's my Wi Fi. Yeah. I wanted to try this to see if it worked, and everything seems to have gone really well. Yep. So, yeah, at this point, it is 2.15. I'm going to officially sign out, though me and Sean might hang around and talk a bit more. Uh, we may look at some of the errata stuff, so I'm going to put the spoiler tag up. I probably should. You could probably wipe the explicit tag on YouTube because yeah, I don't no, uh, think we needed it. Nope, nope. Maybe. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't think we did. I said, uh, no, no, I, I said uh, POS once, but that was the closest I got to actually, <laughs> actually swearing. You actually said P-O-S, not... Yeah, yeah, I yeah. actually said P-O-S. There you go. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's possible I missed it. So there you go. That was uh, the Tabletop Bellhop, Bellhop's Tabletop discussion of Gloomhaven, the FAQ and errata, uh, taking a look at all the stuff we missed in our games and things that I think are easy to miss. Uh, there will be a link in the show notes to that. While you're here on YouTube, smash that subscribe button. We'd highly appreciate it. If you're watching us on Twitch, hit that follow button. Uh, join us every Friday where we try to play Gloomhaven at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, as long as we don't have three of four people sick, like happened tonight. Uh, in that case, we will still stream something Gloomhaven related. Maybe I'll open the other two character boxes and try playing solo sometime. I hear the game's really good solo. As well, you can catch the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast recorded live every Wednesday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern where Sean and I answer your gaming and game night questions. Uh, other than that, you can find us all over the web as Tabletop Bellhop One Word and you can check out the webpage at tabletopbellhop.com. For Tabletop Bellhop, I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, and I'm this Sean. is... Good night, game on.